The following podcast contains mature language and adult discussions. If there was a uh, like a podcast chart for best intros, we're at number one every week. Music visuals, we're at number one every week. No question. Tell me one better. Tell me one better. I'll listen to it. No, there isn't one. Click this Kevin Ash podcast. He's Kevin. I'm Sean. Back. On another Monday, most of y'all listen on a Monday, we noticed. You could listen whenever you want. You know, they, there was a comment this week that says that you, you keep talking over the fucking open, and I can't hear you. I talked a little a, a little uh, extra loud today, maybe. You no, know, I'm just, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm I pointing, did see it. I'm so. pointing out where fucking, you know, we're, you know just, just trying to do whatever we can to make us... Uh, a more efficient and uh, audio-friendly podcast. Yes, we uh, we listen. Yes, we we, we, listen we, to we, you we, we we've come to the we've come to the conclusion, and I've uh, Sean and I had had an in-depth conversation at Sean's business plan before coming to podcast world was. Kayfabe, it was DVD driven and it was a visually driven medium. And I've been on television. Neither one of us uh, were with CBS in 1930 when they had fucking radio. So uh, we're not radio guys, and we're 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 under we're, we're very understanding that uh, at, at times, like maybe the, the slap uh, segment we had last week was. Uh, probably not really great to, to listen to with just the smacks and you know nothing for four minutes or maybe the Buddy Rich. But to me, the Buddy Rich was, I mean, that's still fucking some sweet drumming. That's just my Absolutely. opinion. Absolutely. That, that yeah. functions as an audio yeah. file. But um, anyway, so we're going to be putting together, I, not not I, but uh, Steve and, and, and our, our, our crew would be putting together and Wesley and Dom, we've put together um, a, a package that you'll be able to uh, view on YouTube that will be all the audio snippets that you missed from this wonderful fucking visual. Yeah. And you know the way I look at it, like, a lot of people like to read their books on, like, a, uh, listen to audio books, I should say. And... Um, uh, what they do. I like oftentimes. to read. I like to read. I like to read mine propped in the crack of a fucking very fine woman's ass. I know. But you know what though? It's got to be a short book, because um, you know the uh, the, uh, the the I was, paper's going to take moisture. You know. Well, if that's the case, and it doesn't matter anyway, because that eleven soft is going to be in, in action by then. If it's if it's taking moisture. <laughs> Dude, might as well be, a, might seeing, be a gra- might as well be a graphic novel. Just just jump to the chase. I am seeing the best Barnes and Noble commercial right now. <laughs> just like like glory holes in book, every other uh, book, aisle. Book, <laughs> books a million is going to make a comeback. <laughs> um, so what what we're going to do? Similar to like if you if you get an audio book, a lot of times in the description of the audio book, you'll have. Uh, a link to some PDF files for the pictures in the middle of the book that you wouldn't enjoy just by listening. So we will have reels, shorts, that will be dumped on socials and on YouTube um, every week. So, for example, if we have another smack fest where some people are beating the shit out of each other for the uh, for your edification... Um, you can check out the reel, and you'll see the visual. You will have heard the audio on your commute to work, and um, you can uh, 
We could, and for the folks that play this at work, I always occasionally get, we see that comment like, oh my God, had to run and lower the computer when a customer walked in and Nash was talking about dropping his dong in the uh, Lake Minnetonka. Um, imagine someone who plays this, though, audibly at work. You're asking for it. You got you to gotta go headphones or, or just wait till you get the fuck home. Or don't give a fuck. Well, you know, when if you're running the daycare, you know, and you hey. and you want to listen, I've well, also noticed from from, from the uh, comments that somehow I've, I've been uh, there's this, this uh, I like drag queens. Like a couple of people have said something about I don't know if the the summer of '92 is now turned into a drag queen thing or. I didn't see that. That's um, yeah. and 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 I, I actually never got that impression from you, Kevin. But I, I clearly don't know you as well as I. No, could. I I tell you, we were in Little Rock, Arkansas, and there was like a, a, a I think it used to be a bowling alley, and it was it was by this Waffle House, and me and Scotty Steiner went like looked across and just like it looked like Roadhouse, you know, like the the gravel parking lot. But I mean, it was there was fucking. No place to park. So we ate our Waffle House, and we said, you know, let's go see what the fuck's going on. So we, we, we walk in there, and it's, it's, a, it's a drag show. And um, I had never been to one. And it was so entertaining. And, you know, they, some of those they, guys they, they, they were, yeah, some of them were, were, were not, I mean, it's like it, it, it's like the guys that get, go on Instagram and you go to the, like like you you know you'll follow like you know you might look at some some hot hot girls or whatever and um, so then you hit your uh, magnifying glass and it'll just pop up what you've been looking at so a bunch of hot broads will pop up and there it's like have you ever seen on Instagram where there'll be a bitch that looks like she's been like smoking crack for three years. She's got no teeth, she's got horrible, her skin's horrible, she, her hair's ratty, and she, she, she does the process from A to Z, of, and she usually finishes by putting her teeth in, but she paints herself up, puts the wig on, and does everything, and the girl looks like an 11 when she wow. finishes. It's unbelievable. Now, were you on Tammy Sitch's account? Where, where, where did you catch this? No, no. I, I don't. I, I mean, come on. There's only so much modern modern science can do. Um, but um, gosh, that's got to be rough, right? You're just still, you're in for life, right? It, I was, is that the sentence? I mean, it. it it doesn't seem like she. It doesn't seem like somebody that's going to make parole and come out and stay out. So no, I think uh, I think any hope of rehabilitation is is, is yeah. over. You know, there's only one way to know if you're dealing with a real woman. Now, it, you, you say you could pull the pants down, but people get operations now to to make things look different. A man's ring finger is larger than the pointer finger. Okay, so look at your hands, palm first. So your ring finger is larger than your pointer finger. A woman's is either smaller I'm the same. or the same size. I'm the same. Go, go to your other. You probably lost the tip of your finger in a basketball game or something or oh. when you were in the Yakuza. Look at the other hand. Is it is it really the same? Yeah. A woman's will be the same or smaller. I, I would I would venture to guess yours is slightly larger, and you just can't. I tell. do have a fucking Adam's apple, though. <clears throat> if I have to, I'll fucking think... I'll stand up and <laughs> juggle my yeah, balls. Yeah, we're, we're good. We're good. <laughs> I'll juggle my balls because ain't no way fucking nobody but God made them motherfucking gorgeous motherfuckers. <laughs> God couldn't get you to fucking Lafayette this week. Could could he for oh, uh, for an man. appearance? I swear. I swear to God, if I don't have fucking some of the worst travel luck, so go to Pensacola, everything's fine. So I'm supposed to go to Lafayette, Louisiana. The, I, I meet the people from Lafayette at Pensacola. 
sweetheart people. And, I mean, Dallas Page and I, we had a nitro there, and, and Dallas and I took off. We got there early, and we took off, and we found, like, a, a place, like, down by like, some bayou that was that sold uh, crayfish and fucking uh, buckets of beer. And we got fucking wasted and came back to Nitro. And that's my, you know, my memory when I hear of Lafayette is, is me and, and, and Paige getting fucked up and, and, and still working and having a good time. I think we worked in, against each other in a tag. Um, I think that's why we did it. But so it's bike week, so I know I'm going to have to swim fucking upstream against the salmon so it's there's a half a million bikers it's it's friday it's no it's actually thursday is it thursday or friday? it's thursday mm-hmm. so um i have a 636 flight so i get there an hour i mean it takes me a, a, a good a bit, about 45 minutes to do like a 20 minute drive and i get there check my bags get on the plane it's seven o'clock and i'm like ah fuck and the conference tournament games are on for basketball for N- ncaa mm-hmm. so i'm watching i'm watching those and um i, I get lo- i get lo- all of a sudden the, the it, it uh the tv cuts off because not once you actually like get ready to leave that shit doesn't work so we sit there again sit there again now I'm looking, and we're supposed to land at 826. I have a 905 connection. Mm, connection out of, uh, out of, out of Atlanta. Atlanta yeah. And so I go ahead, and, and I get on my app, and I look, and it says, you know, uh, plane is delayed. These are your options. And I look, and the, the, the only option that has first class the next day is it 6 a.m., which makes me basically have to get up at, like, 3.30, which means I ain't going to bed. Right, of course. So, and by the time I got my bags and got home, it was, fuck, <clears throat> it was, like, 10 o'clock. I mean, it, it, and I was, you know, you're angry. It's just, like... And what was the, what was the quote, weather? So, it was weather. They, they, it's, it's, like... For pe- for people that travel, it's such an annoyance when fucking somebody just sits there and lies, <laughs> you know. Just it's so she yeah she she starts off she goes well due to weather, I immediately go to radars. I look at what's going on where we are. I look at where Atlanta is. There's nothing that would prevent us. Because you know you, you can so it shows the front coming in. There's green. There's no yellow, red, orange, nothing. There's nothing weather-wise that would prevent this fucking plane from leaving. You so. have you have access to the radars while you're sitting in the plane. You watching you navigate the computers like watching early man with a rock. But you've got radars oh. up on your phone, dude. I'm fucking hey. When it comes to traveling and, and catching you in a lie. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. I got, I got everything. I, I'm fucking, I'm, I'm wired into the pilot's fucking mic. So th- then we, we finally, we, we pull back and they shut the plane up and they sit down, they put their, their, uh, you know, seatbelts on. They, the, the flight attendants sit down and we back up and we sit there for fucking 20 minutes now it's really looking bad. Mm. I'm thinking like, ooh, fuck. I said, I've done this flight best time, 54 minutes, and that's fucking late at night. That's like leaving Atlanta at 11 and coming home. There's, you know, there's nothing. And uh, people that, 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 that fly a lot, like there's a, um, a thing, I think it's called the Craig's Gate, and it's at the... It's a border of Florida, and all planes have to go through this Craig's Gate because Jacksonville has that uh, Naval Air Station, and they have airspace there. So you can't when you fly through the Florida. It's like there's like an area, and you'll see fucking in in the daytime. You'll see all these flights 
staggered, then you'll see them fucking, when they get through that, that Craig's gate, they'll fucking, if they're going to Miami, they'll go left. If they're going to Tampa, Orlando, they'll go right. But they've all got to go through this this spot. So that's what happens is that thing uh, gets clogged up, you know, which is fucking because just inadequacies of, of fucking, uh, and I'm sure it's the acting FAA uh, supervisor's fucking job. But who's Craig, first of all? And why just, does he get a gate? I don't know, man. I, I, I'm thinking it was Craig Elo that fucking Jordan hit that shot on. They're just mm-hmm. giving him, just giving him some fucking love. Uh, but so then people now it's to the point where people are getting up and getting in their briefcases because they're like, well, fuck this. I'm going to get my phone. Or I'm going to do something else. And um, she goes, um, could you please sit down? We we're, we're in the process of getting getting the paperwork. I'm like, bitch, we're a hundred yards from the fucking gate. Who are you giving paperwork to? The motherfucker next to you? Ain't nobody fucking giving paperwork to nobody. Like fuck you. That's your that's your second fucking lie. Like, are you moving? Oh, we're sitting fucking still. And you can't stand what the, the, the guy in one fucking C, bulkhead, never sit there. Bulkhead has got to piss. He gets up, matter of fact, he, this is exactly how he looks at her. Like, like, this isn't a problem, right? I can get up and piss. She's like, no, you need to sit down. For the paperwork. So they can do the paperwork. I guess. Because were they doing it know. in the bathroom? No, uh, no. I guess it was just hold your piss, you gladiator. Wow. You know, I, I, I just was. And then the fucking pilot comes out. He says, "Well, I've got a, a, a engine light on here, so this is a mechanical, and uh, we've contacted blah 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 blah." Then he comes out, opens the door, and walks out. I'm sitting in two B, or not to be. And he, he he stands there. And I looked at him, and before he could fucking open his dick sucker, I said, uh, sir, I said, at this point, I'm considering myself a hostage on Delta Airlines. And he looks at me, I said, no, I'm serious. I said, if we have to go to Atlanta at this point, I'm going to have to stay at the Holiday Inn Limited in the hood, and it's like, that ain't happening. So either like I don't give a fuck if it's a if it's a ladder. Just let me get off this motherfucker. I, I I've already checked the, my flights. I'm not reboarding tomorrow. This is a fucking this is a punt. And so he looks at me. He goes so we're, next thing you know they've got another engine light. They pull the fucking plane back up and fucking uh, they deboard the entire plane. Everybody's asked to get off the plane, but. They tell you because TSA has already left because we're at a, a six-gate airport that only runs two planes. TSA has already left that if you leave the controlled area, you will not be able to return. So now you've got 135 people mm. standing around this one fucking red coat, and it's, it's amazing. It's, there's the guy that's next in line. That's the best feeling on earth. If you're if you're not the first guy in line, being next is the best is the best thing because there's that little bit of anticipation. But you know, you know what? I'm next. This is the guy that's 135th is standing at the back of a line like he's at fucking Walt Disney World. There's 250 fucking empty seats. I just wanted to go back there and tell all those people, you know, you can't sit the fuck down. And do this 10 people at a time. Because it's going to, this plane isn't going fucking anywhere. It's going to take forever to get our bags off because they weren't expecting to fucking take bags off a plane. So there's one motherfucker that's going to be taking bags off. And when you used to work uh, in the ring, what, what would happen if. I mean, if you're fucking main eventing a, you were on, a pay-per-view or, you were or TV. On, no, you were, on the, you were on a 6 o'clock flight every every day. If you flew, you were on fucking at 535. There were so many times we'd leave the bar in Boston and go sleep at the gate. 
Right. Because we weren't dropping fucking three bills, you know, to to get three hours of sleep. We and, and we'd sleep in front of the exit door. Not in 1994. That was your whole draw. Yeah, right. We, we'd sleep in front of the fucking like we, we the the gate door. So be, if they were going to let somebody on the plane, they'd have to open the door, and we'd be laying there. You'd have to wake us up so we could get Scott in the head with the door. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you guys want to get up? Fuck. Oh, that was the, the the story back in the day when when I first got you know I ran into Snook and you know you see Snook in the morning it'd be dark out but Snook would have his fucking shades on. You'd be like, man, what the fuck's with Snook, man? Why has he got shades on? Fuck, man! You leave the bar and that fucking sun's out. <laughs> it's like fuck them shades. Come <laughs> and me and Scott fucking used to live in those fucking shades. It'd be like. <laughs> if it's, my phone would ring and be like, hey, man, we, we got to catch the shuttle. I'd be like, before I even brush my teeth, okay. <laughs> like, fuck. And then my eyebrows fell off. But uh, You and you and uh, Pac. Yeah. Um, so you didn't get to Lafayette last week. That's uh, it's no, a shame. So folks out disapp- there, you'll see Kev again, on the... Again I, again, I disappoint. So this weekend's Kansas City... So I, 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 I look at the temperatures in Kansas City. It's fucking, I mean, it's cold here today, you know? But it's not, like, bitter cold. Like, I, I went to the gym with a fucking sleeveless shirt on. What's and, Kansas uh, City this week? Fucking, it's, week. Like, it's like, this weekend's like 43 and 18. It's like, fuck! That's the yeah. coldest weather I'll have been in for like a year because mm-hmm. I didn't I haven't left my I, you know, I haven't left since September so right. I've just been down you know I've just been down here in Florida it's just like holy fuck you had some cold spells there this winter though yeah but R- ridiculous. I mean it's like a day right you know like not 18s right I mean you know I, I watch the news and I think I'm watching that fucking horrible end of day end, end of time or end of days whatever that fucking Schwarzenegger movie it- was with the fucking so, the snow and the floods and the floods over on this side and this and fucking, you know, definitely. Uh, Earth is definitely in a in a battle. Yeah, um, I, I, you know what though? I, for the people in the Northeast, I mean, it's, it's been a long time since a lot of those people got fucking twelve inches. Boom. <laughs> we, we've been snowless, if that's what you're. If that's the twelve no, inches, I'm you're talking, well, to. whatever. Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Feedback from last week. Those of you enjoyed the show, like Fingers MC, love the show and love that it starts off my Monday mornings from England. But that misconception section was the best thing from any episode, in my opinion. Nice one, lads. All right, Fingers. Travis N. Singh. Has anybody. Uh huh? No, I was going to say, I, I thought it was very pompous of me to. Uh clarify any mis- any mis- misconceptions of, well that was my saying. idea to do that because no i just that was one of the fucking comments i, I read that it was oh uh, somebody said that you yeah, were pompous that, I, for yeah, doing I, an episode I, on I, yourself I'm, the I'm fucking an, show's I, called the kevin nash podcast and then, and then if the person went on to say i was the worst drawing wwf champion wwe <laughs> which is not true um and that the other the other company i worked for uh, closed down and Eddie Guerrero had it right when they, they, he said that Kevin Nash is just pure evil. Like that I horror said, movie you did. Yeah, I, no, that, I just... That classic. I, I was, no, that was fucking Kane. Oh, well, yeah, I, I could have fucking... That's right. He played Diesel, so maybe, I, maybe it was me. Maybe it was, and maybe it was. Travis N. Singh, has anybody's family members ever call them a drug addict because they smoke weed, but they sit there and they build on coffee and sugar all day and then have diabetes. I think I know what he's saying. And well, uh, like if you've ever been to an AA, like a large... Uh, I remember one time we were in uh, Detroit. Actually, we were in Troy, Michigan. We were staying at the Marriott on Big Beaver. Great, great name for a road. Uh, we're staying on and, uh, and a prom Marriott, date. Uh, yeah, Marriott and uh, Big Beaver, which has a shoeless steakhouse, which is nice. Um, and there was a huge Alcoholics Anonymous, an AA uh, thing going on. And 
this is when they were really fucking buckling down on that smoking inside shit. Mm. So like they had like a, a like a almost like a roped off area in front of the like underneath the the canopy or whatever you want to call it from the you know uh, from the elements where you would come in and, and pull up your car and check in and shit. You couldn't smoke in that area. You had to be in, on the sides of that. But every motherfucker in that AA was pounding fucking. Co- they had these giant green things that were full of coffee. They were, everybody had a cup of coffee and a cigarette standing outside. I'm just like, so you're giving up alcohol for nicotine and caffeine. Well, that was kind of the thing, right? They would allow, as long as you weren't taking what your problem was, then they loaded up those meetings with uh yeah just deal with your fucking cigarettes lung, d- and deal with your lung cancer when it fucking hits you but I, I, it's you know. a slower it's a slower process than the smack or whatever you're what was the uh guy for. what was the, the guy's name um fuck i saw brian dennehy no it's he's uh, joe jackson he had that song everything gives you cancer Nicotine. Oh, of uh, Joe Jackson of like Stepping Out fame? Yeah. Stepping out. That's a great cut. Into the light. I went and saw him at Pine Knob in, outside uh, Detroit. And me and, my, me and my brother Mark went and saw him. And um, a guy like four rows back gets up during his set and has to probably go piss, I, I would imagine. And he just stops playing and he fucking gets on the mic and goes, Really? I can fucking wait? No shit. And I was just like, Whoa, <laughs> Joe Jackson, you're a cock slave. That is oh, wow. fucked. Joe's show, right? You know what I want I would have liked to talk to Scott about is lawn care. Do you know how difficult it is and how goddamn time consuming it is? If you have a lawn to get this no, and, and nor do you. That's why we don't, because it, it's you, you either you're either good at it or you're not. And if you're not, then your shit looks fucking ragged. It's like it's like I can't trim a beard to save my life. So I got to go to the barber. This is what people need to do. People need to call Sunday. Get on it. Sunday dot com. Get their shit. Absolutely. Done and, you know, you're going to go to get sunday.com slash nash um and um th- this is all about what we're talking about and it's lawn care and it's the age-old problem i remember commercials from when i was a kid lawn doctor get a green thumb without lifting a finger the lawn has always been time consuming get your sunday back by checking out sunday now we're in a time now where spring is upon us, almost, right? We're gonna, a lot of people are going to be digging in the garden, in the yard, and um, Sunday lawn care is going to make it easier than ever to enjoy. Um, does anyone else just kind of stand there in the, in the aisles, in Home Depot, not knowing where so many products, what to do? So reclaim your weekend with Sunday, okay? Sunday lawn care can take one thing off that to-do list and spend, instead of spending time working on your yard, Sundays are going to be for you enjoying it, okay? Go to getsunday.com slash Nash. Enter your address and get a customized plan created just for your lawn. I'm not kidding. You just go in, you put in your address, and you get a customized plan for your lawn. No more trips to the store hauling heavy bags. Um, This is going to get shipped straight to your home, okay? You just need a hose to apply Sunday. You can fertilize your whole lawn in less time than it takes to watch an episode of your favorite TV show, for God's sakes. And they only use ingredients you can feel good about. No harsh chemicals, no long waiting periods or trying to keep your kids and pets off the lawn while it's still on there. You simply apply, you let it dry, and you're back to enjoying your yard. Sunday is easy and affordable. Some lawn services, by the way, I know they can cost you about 1500 bucks a year, but Sunday's Full season plans start at just $109. And on top of that, if you're a Click This listener, 
you're going to get 20% off, okay? Full season plans starting at 109 and you can get 20% off when you visit GetSunday.com slash Nash at checkout. Get Sunday, G E T Sunday dot com slash Nash at checkout. Twenty percent off your custom plan. Um, go get Sunday. Get your Sundays back, guys. Yeah, Fuck. that's it. I think it all might have meant shoeless Joe Jackson too of uh, of baseball fame. Yeah, that was Ray Liotta. How that's about right. fucking? How about the Oscars not having fucking my boy Tom Sizemore in the memorial fucking section? It must have been cut. It must have been edited already and packaged. I don't give a fuck. I know they should. I know they should have. That size it. more, man. That might, yeah. Anne he- that Anne Hesh, she wasn't fucking. She died halfway through the year. She didn't get. Not, I mean, I don't get it. Like eighty percent of those motherfuckers are like, and I'm not saying that they're not important to the industry, but they're not mainstream. And. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Wesley says no Leslie Jordan. Oh. I, I guess if you ever had contact with me, you didn't get a fucking nod. Because I've had such a death-filled fucking year. You just mm. if, you, if you die in my, in my fucking uh, wheelhouse, they, uh, they, they can't bring it up because Will Smith might hit you. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I wasn't going to go into it, but I, I was reading the next day some of the bullshit that they were given Jamie Lee Curtis because we still have a segment of society that feels that they are the authority on who should who first of all you can't give awards for art this is number one this has to stop this all has to stop there's no best anything in art, I can tell you who the best fucking basketball team is in two in three weeks I can tell you who the best uh, uh, football team is every February there, there's numbers to do that for us. There's no best, unless you want to reward box office. There are numbers for that. But there's no best. There's no best. So don't sit there and say that because Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, I heard one theory that she was on screen for less time than the girl in that movie, which, Jesus Christ, I sat through that movie. Don't even start me on that. Um, you can't do this. And then it, then it becomes a race thing, and... Uh, who who was up? Who Angela, was the the, Angela Bassett. Angela Bassett. With this. She's a wonderful actor. Actor, but she it's really hard. Is. It's it's really. Well, I you mean, you can't I, sit there and say one is more meritorious than the other. Then you start throwing color around. Give me a fucking break. It's gone too far. The pendulum swung too far. It's got to come back a little. It's got to come back. Yeah, just it, everything. It's to me. It's, it's like a bodybuilding contest. Like, it's just absolutely subjective. Like there, there's criteria, but. You know, I know. I agree. Um, it's, it's the the criteria still has to be differentiated between the fucking people that are using the criteria. You're right. You could read the criteria and have a completely different conception of what we're looking for than than I would. Absolutely. So even if you have criteria, it's too subjective, is what I'm saying. Absolutely. You so do this. it's like I think what they should probably do is just fucking get rid of all those fucking shows. I agree. I agree. You, it, it is put on by the American Motion Picture Association. It's just a big commercial for all these movies. People think there's merit to it. Won an Oscar. It's an advertisement for a bunch of movies to drive people to the theater in January and February. Yeah, the motherfuckers don't even send out fucking... Burners or anything anymore. They used to, you know, if you were in SAG, you used to get a fucking shitload of stuff. I got shit. Uh, four I got or five nothing. DVDs every day. I got nothing. They give codes now and shit, but yeah, fuck yeah. It's a, let me let me go ahead and get on my fucking uh, five uh, three three by uh, three by two fucking Samsung and rifle through a couple of motion pictures. Boy, this is so cinematic. Fucking assholes. Wes the one says, "Love the podcast." If he didn't look, if he didn't book the finger poke, then who did? And surely Kevin Hogan could have said no uh, to the idea if they thought it was bad for business. And my, I, I actually answered this guy on on our site and told him that obviously you need to go back and w- watch the fucking episode on Hogan's contract because 
Hogan did have the creative control. And if you look at the pay, the way he was, it was pay structured, in retrospect, when I read this contract, which I was not aware of until we did the, the episode on it, mm. that he wouldn't have got the payday he would have had it just been Nash and Goldberg. Because of the that, building. That, that 33,000 people sitting in that fucking, in that building was fucking, or whatever it was. I think it was 190, but, you know, it just, it just, it just seemed like a lot to me. Again, they have our the, podcast I mean, network's accountants. <laughs> but, then the again, I, I, but then again, I was the champion and a fucking drawing one at that. So, I mean. um, so, so when you're there, uh, Hogan. All right. So WCW, four, five o'clock. That, that's when you lock a show down, right? It, you, you don't know the day before what's happening on the show, oh, right? No, no. So, I, 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 I think that I, you know what, I, none of us can remember anything. Eric can't remember Dick. I can't remember Dick. Fucking Hulk can't remember Dick. Scott, probably who could remember, it's past. And we'll get to that later that since it's been a year since we lost my, my, my partner. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so it's like, I don't know what happened, but I know that, that, Hulk had worked his way somehow in that main event. And at that point, now what are we supposed to do? If we're going to turn on Bill, would we go out and punch each other in the face for nine minutes first? And Hogan I'm, had to be on the well, card, he, right? Yeah, so it's like he's coming loose and he's coming after Hogan. He's not necessarily coming after me. So if I don't do the finger poke, then I'm, I'm a baby face. And I'm wrestling Hogan. So he comes, so Goldberg gets loose, gets into the Georgia Dome, hits the ring, and now he hammers Hogan. And as soon as he hammers Hogan, it's a DQ. And I still have the strap. Mm-hmm. And that's not what they wanted. Right. So, that's why Jamie Lee Curtis won. See? That's it right there. Because it's, the, it's, just, it's just the Academy Awards and it's just fucking sports entertainment, guys. No curveballs were thrown or hit in this segment. Love somebody to do the fucking flat back up there at the uh, at the Academy Awards at Man's Chinese Theater. Fucking Chris Rock fucking worked fucking super strong Japanese style last year. Fuck. <laughs> super strong style. I, Waltman's you, popping for the reference. You come, you chop me. I no sell. I used to love that when you go over to work in Japan and be like this, like, uh... Yeah, hey man, right, right, right there. I get you in the corner, do all my shit. Oh no, yeah, you know, I know my shit. You know, my knees, my elbows. Just you know, I'll put you in the fucking corner. And I, and I understand. All right, how about this? You come off the rope, hit me with a fucking clothes on. Yeah, look, give me a leg screw. Yeah, fucking, I'll charge you. Give me a yeah. Fuck you. You understand me, motherfucker. English got better as you yeah, gave them offense. As I get, as, I, as I'm putting them over. Joe Malone, uh, I always thought in the intro, Kev was doing a drive-by chop. I didn't realize it was a homoerotic kidnapping. Once again, Joe Malone getting on the bandwagon, folks, uh, analyzing I, the... It's, it, I watched it today with that thought, and it's the furthest from that. It's... Well, so I mean, who are we to step on someone's... Fantasy? Yeah. Well, you are kind of in a cruising pose against that post. Some people, if you analyze, you know, if you want to get all but everything everywhere uh, I, all at I, once about it. I didn't see a bandana coming out of your back pocket. Like, if you'd had a yellow bandana coming out of your left pocket and, you, and I knew that I was going to piss on you, then. Oh, I, think, uh, I think Wesley's firing up Corel Draw right now. Uh, yeah. 
NMLS number 65084, Equal Housing Lenders. Woo! As an adult, don't we all miss spring break? Nothing like taking a week off from all your responsibilities. Well, here's the next best thing for adults, a spring break from house payments. SaveWithConrad.com can help you get rid of all your credit card debt just like that. We're routinely helping our listeners save five, six, seven, even 800 bucks a month. And you don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket to do this, but check this out. No house payments for two months at SaveWithConrad.com yellow flapper on my back there brian mcneil sean i'm sorry to say but chris rock doesn't waste a <laughs> moment couldn't be more incorrect chris literally says everything twice every sentence a lot of things three or four times he makes 20 minutes worth of material an hour long by saying everything multiple multiple times watch the special not exact well i did see it and he i did make note that he does repeat some stuff does repeat some stuff repeating stuff Every once in a while, well, I don't you, think it you took a twenty-minute to, gimmick. You, you, you and have 60. to, you have to, because fucking just on, on this show alone, we say it one time, and people come back, and it's like they hear whatever the fuck they want to hear. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I'll repeat that for you, Brian. Exactly, exactly, exactly. exactly. So she said, "Um, where are we here?" Uh, Cut you off. Radical Edward. I wanted to read this one, Kevin. You know we're a very uh, we're we're very accepting of all people here. This. Uh, so I got a question. Uh oh. Is 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 does this pass for my urine? So it's not so dark this time. No, that's not urine. Urine is it? Yeah, that's my urine. Well, you you had a lot of water today, then. Oh God, man! I. There was no protein going on today, bro. A, no, I had I had fucking shit. I opened the day with seventy five grams of protein, two cups of oats, and a banana. That was my that was my opening volley. Well, it's a very it's a very clear sample today, Mister Man. No, I, I my it's my I stopped this. It's just twenty one days without alcohol. Like my fucking my system's in shock. This is like magic Mike piss. When I did Magic Mike, I didn't drink for a, a couple of months. Now you, you drank wine for enjoyment. You 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 really you genuinely like wine. I don't think you drank to I get fucked up. Absolutely love the taste. Right. So now I won't is, I won't drink I won't drink a fucking a glass of wine that I don't that if it hits my palate and it's fucking shit I won't drink it. I won't drink ninety percent of the airlines fucking red wines. So I'll take a sip. I'll be like fuck this. But isn't there now you're depriving yourself of a of a joy? Is there no middle ground where you could enjoy one glass of well, I, wine? I, you don't have I, to drink two bottles. I gotta go get my colon checked. It's like that. It's like that time of the, you know. Mm. I, I missed it during. I'm, I'm like 18, 19 months off my colon check, so it's just like I'm thinking like. I know alcohol isn't like probably the most like, and and I don't, the only red meat I really eat is grass fed. Unless I go out to eat, and they don't have grass fed. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I'm, I eat pretty damn clean and, and take pretty good care of myself. But it's just like knowing that you're going to get your colon checked is that's you know, I just love the colon guard. You're gonna shit in a box, send yeah. it to them, and you got an eight percent chance whether it comes back false negative or false positive. Is it eight percent? It's eight percent. Fuck that. It's like when when they would do those PET scans of my heart, and they put the nuclear dye in my heart to check, mm-hmm. you know, because my dad died so early, and fucking they would get to my diaphragm, like the early ones, and the radiate like they couldn't read through my diaphragm because it was so thick and like that's like the, this much of the bottom of my heart where your rear descending artery is which is a fucking like that's the, the most uh common blockage place and and it, the the guy going ah hey, you're probably fine no fuck that take a fucking take a scope up my fucking leg and look at my heart that way, if there is a blockage, you can fucking fix it. Like, I'm not, I don't pay, play the odds on, on fucking, you know. When's the colonoscopy? I, went, I, I actually went, went today because my, uh, my buddy uh, 
is is the is my doc's uh, son, mm -hmm. John. And uh, so, and we 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 put our bracket we did our brackets together today. We that's like a, a thing we've been doing for years. He and I do our brackets together. Mm. So we did that today, and, I, and then Doc wanted to just just wanted to talk to me because my feces has been a little off in color. So he said he wants me to get some a bunch of. Cause he said it, your, your colon isn't going to change your. He said, but you might just be so fucking your system might be so cleaned out, and you you cut your carbs back that it just you know. Did it resemble the art behind you at all? Maybe the yeah. uh. The coloration. I wish it looked like that fucking. That, that I wish it was dark, but it's not. It's... Wesley wants you to shit in the bottle and show the audience. <laughs> All right. Well, that's... <laughs> right. Well, while he does that, Radical Edward said, "I want to shed some light as a trans person regarding the pronoun segment. As someone from Chicago, I totally grew up with everyone being a guy, and it was gender neutral." This is when, if, by the way, anyone who didn't listen, please go back and listen to the reruns like you do for all the other fucking shows. And um, we were talking about the phrase guys. Like, hey, guys, come on, guys. And is it appropriate to use that if there are women in the group that you're saying, come on, guys, I'm waiting or whatever. So, oh, uh, think, but, the, but it was it was brought under because the Sierra Club said it wasn't proper. Right. And it should be replaced with y'all. Y'all. So, uh, Radical Edward is saying he doesn't want to make anyone uncomfortable, even if it's not the same connotation for me. It's a pain in the ass, but the mild inconvenience makes my loved ones so much more affirmed. With that said, I also fear, feel weird about y'all being the go-to for neutrality. Kayfabe Dad has a point that we can probably do better with... Who's Kayfabe Dad? Are you, me or you? Kayfabe Dad has a point that we can probably do better with a different inclusive word. It's also a running joke in the community that fucker is gender neutral. Kev, I think, what do you think of that? Come on, fuckers, let's go. I, I think I'm, I'm going to go with the Pittsburgh Yins. You know, that Pittsburgh, uh, that Pittsburghian Yins. Yins need to, to, to get in here and have some fucking uh, spackle. Kayfabe Dad was last week's uh, person that wrote the comment, by the way, I guess. Oh. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, okay. So, anyway, he said things are getting really scary in regards to anti-trans legislation, so it's good to have conversations about respectful community terminology, but also other internal perspectives about how we can be more inclusive and not sound like Cracker Barrel breakfast. All right. Well, I'm glad you appreciated that, Radical. We're all working through it. <clears throat> and they took fucking Uncle Herschel's breakfast off the fucking menu. What was that consisting of? Uh, it was um, chicken tenders, hash brown casserole, a couple of eggs. It was it was the uh, and there maybe some sourdough toast or uh, you get a biscuit. God, was, I, I love their French toast was so goddamn good. Oh, they got those blackberry pancakes. Oh, I have Fuck. Had those. Ugh. And that, they have real maple syrup like. It's a cheat day, and you, there's a fucking, and there was one of those on the road. Scott would always, Scott, every time we'd fucking eat garbage, Scott would say, fuck it, we're working like dogs, our body needs it. That's right. <laughs> Good for him, I like that philosophy. Yeah. How about the chicken and, what is it, chicken and um, uh, dumplings? Oh, yeah, the chicken that's, and dumplings. You know, my my my, my so son my hungry. son loved their chicken tenders, and my wife found out that the fucking the marinade the uh, marination is just like Italian uh, salad dressing. And they just so they fucking, marinate the chicken in that, and then they fry it. Yeah, and they fry it, and that mm. gives it that tremendous. Oh, I'm so. salivating over here for God's sake. Oh, I'm st I'm fucking starving. Kevin, two days on the uh, the twenty second, we'll be doing another live audience. So those of you listening on a Monday, on Monday the twentieth, um, on the twenty second, we'll be taping um, at uh, seven o'clock. Come join us uh, for the live action. Um, you know, I was intrigued by this article about 
WWE being on uh, being available for for wagering now. Um, and uh, Colorado and Michigan were the uh, states that WWE has held discussions with uh, about betting on scripted match results. This, to me, seems like a recipe for disaster. I mean, if you can fucking bet on the fucking coin toss at the Super Bowl, fuck. But, it, but nobody knows the coin toss. But no one has decided what the coin toss is before. Someone has decided the results of all these matches prior. Can you bet on anything else in the world that's predetermined? Yeah, but what? how, how easy would it be to fucking... Get involved with fucking Vegas and change the finish and say you were injured and fucking have all the all the money. <laughs> See, some motherfuckers are going to think like this. So, all right, so betting on the Academy Awards is apparently legal. So what they're saying is because there's an, like an accounting firm, I don't know who does the Oscars, but Ernst & So, Young, okay, so that explains the fucking Jamie Lee Curtis Fucking money was on Angela Bassett. Fucking, exactly. They just fucking Buster Douglas our ass. Exactly. Saw where the you odds were going. You couldn't get a fuck. You couldn't. You couldn't place money on Tyson. Um, so they're saying that Ernst and Young, WWE, would be working with uh, Ernst and Young to secure the match results, so they won't leak to the public. So they're securing the physical writing of the match results, I guess, but there's. People in creative that have just decided this. Not only that, you got to tell the talent. They got to fucking, they got to physically put, uh, physically and mentally put the fucking finish together. Well, they they're saying WWE creative says that they don't plan to inform wrestlers about results until hours before a match. But I think hours before the match is still enough time to call your buddy. I guess maybe maybe get they, on fan uh, on may, uh, maybe they DraftKings. Uh, the only thing they could do is not take a bet after four p.m. day of, and then that way there, if they gave the the finishes out at four thirty, nobody. It's already would, locked. It's locked. And that's off the top of my head. So that, and I think that's a fucking that's brilliant, and that's exactly what they should do, and that's the end of that discussion. <laughs> so you'd be wagering on WrestleMania, I take it. Fuck no. You wouldn't. You wouldn't trust this system to put money on a on one of the matches, dude. I, I, I'm starting to wonder if fucking footballs will work. Some weeks I wonder the same thing. So, all right, so if you were to put money on uh, WrestleMania 39, by the way, is, is upcoming. Sweet. And uh, some matches have been announced. Um, I think we have uh, Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes, right? Yep. Um, okay, what, so here are, so there are some odds. So what is, this is, no, that, was that, was, that was an old one. Uh, SmackDown Women's Championship, Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley. Um, uh, women's Championship. So let's let's do that. Oh, you want to do that? Okay, you want to wager? Let's do Rhea. Let's do Rhea Charlotte. <clears throat> so uh, Ro Roman and Cody, who's going over? Roman. Okay. Now, because you're friends with Paul, is this in any way influencing? Is him hearing your opinion in any way going to influence the company's plans? the results of WrestleMania. I hope so. If, if, it, if, if he hears me say Roman, then fuck it, he'll, he'll, he'll make sure Cody goes. He'll put Cody. I look like an asshole. <laughs> Charlotte and Rhea? Um, Charlotte and Rhea. Charlotte the heavy favorite. Yeah. I don't know, though, man. I think they've, they've really pushed Rhea to that almost a spot above the female kind of that tweener that china spot you know right like she's 
Should... But you see what we're looking at here, those of you listening. We're looking at the odds. Rhea Ripley at a, neg- at a negative 400, Charlotte at a plus 250. Now, booking this and seeing that, you already know crowd sentiment. So you know how impactful it would be based on the odds. Right. You know how impactful it would be to have the other person win. Or what a letdown it would be if the heavy, heavy, heavy favorite goes over. I what think was, this is going to change. The what was the Roman? What was the Roman Reigns? Cody. Uh, it was closer. Uh, Roman and Cody. It was uh, minus one seventy five, plus one twenty for. So Roman's the favorite. Roman's been a champion for what eight hundred and fifty fucking years, or yeah, it's like he's been around. Actually, long. no, no. Co- Cody would be the favorite. I mean, the I mean, yeah, Cody. I mean, I mean, Roman, but Roman. Uh, Roman's been the champion longer than Noah lived, right? Didn't Noah live to be like fucking three hundred years or some shit? Yeah. So 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 you think um, so you think Roman's going to retain? You know what? At this point, I, I I don't give a fuck. No, obviously, but no, I mean, I, I would have a li- vested I, interest, but I would like to see. I mean, I would you know, nine hundred and twenty six days. <clears throat> And we're pro- I mean, how many days out are we from Mania? Another another twenty, twenty one. Yeah. So he he's going to be the champion for like two hundred and fifty fucking or nine hundred and fifty days. I love that. I love long title reigns. I hate this shit where the someone's a champion seventeen times in two years. That's how it was forever. I think that's one of the things that stabilized that that company. I don't. I think I think it would be. It, it never hurts. To have a baby face go over, especially that if that's it's going to be the last match on Sunday night, to have Cody go over to give the WrestleMania moment, uh, to fucking let everybody leave that fucking big ass arena, and that's watching it very very happy, and then fucking give him a, a you know give him, give him a two three four month run so he can sell some merch. And then fucking beat him because there's always the money's always in the babyface chasing. Mm. I mean that's just that's just been proven. What do you think of the two night WrestleMania stuff? Uh, you know it's it's like porn on your fucking phone. It's just it it, it just is now. It's heaven. You it know? just is. It just is. It's just, just there. You know, fuck. It's you know. I mean. If I moved all that shit in the fucking that so whatever the SoCal SoFi so whatever <laughs> fuck the name of that brand the and I call it the Rams I don't even give the Chargers so I can half half the fucking field it's just the Rams place um, but uh, yeah if I moved all my shit there I'd want to keep it more than one day because the staple the Staples Center is like in the middle of downtown that they'll have. You know, they'll have probably NXT and Raw and all that. will They'll run out of uh, the Staples Center. Mm-hmm. So, be, but from a those. viewer's perspective, you're talking as a worker. But from a viewer's perspective, is the impact of WrestleMania still significant? If it's, I, I think because eight it, hours over two nights. I, I think because there's it's not a buy rate anymore. Like you're not paying seventy nine ninety nine for the one day, mm. so it, it's streaming, and it's content, and we all know when we went over the YouTube numbers of what the <laughs> WWE does, that it's just more. It's you know, more Wait content. Minute, our numbers. No. Let's let's break this show over two nights. Let's let's do the WrestleMania format. I can, um, okay, well, we we should be wrapping here in about five minutes. Good show, man. Thanks. <clears throat> Brock versus Omos. I, I like the I like the visual when they fucking were, uh, were 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 nose up, and and yeah, Lesnar they Lesnar definitely fucking make that big fucker. Like Lesnar's that guy. Mm. Lesnar's a fucking. He is not a mark. He's a minus five hundred to almost his plus three hundred. What do you think? 
I think the big guy goes over. Okay. Nothing. I, fucking Brock's like fucking Scott. He's bulletproof. Seth Rollins and Logan Paul. Seth at a minus 150. Logan Paul at a plus 110. I think Logan Paul goes over. He, he hasn't got a win yet. He got, he got knocked the fuck out, so his boxing shit's fucked up. So he better... He can't take make too, it work. Yeah, <laughs> can't take too many fucking losses. Austin Theory and John Cena. I don't think it hurts Seth. Austin Theory. <sighs> Austin a minus three thirty three. Currently the champion. Again, I, I just I you know. After listening to Cena's promo, basically saying if you lose, you're fucking finished here. I can't see them pushing that psychology, and pushing that. Uh, sentiment towards the the fan base that they did two weeks ago, and then following it through with Cena beating him. Cena at a plus two hundred. Yeah. What else is confirmed? What other matches are confirmed here? Edge, oh, the Hell in the Cell. Yeah, right. Hell in the Cell. <clears throat> Finn Balor at a minus one seventy five. Edge at plus one twenty five. I, I, I'm actually going to have an a, a, a over under on that. Of will they stay in the fucking cell as should happen? Because that's the reason for a hell in a cell or a topped cage match is that the uh, aggressor Finn Balor, who they wiener the other three wiener dogged uh, Monday. Now is is in the cell and and Edge gets to beat his chest and 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 get the fucking victory. So, so you're with the uh, you with the numbers here. Edge going over. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Or fucking you know some shit and the door gets pulled off by a fucking John Deere tractor and they wiener dog him again and bust him open and you know. We're all women's championship match. I think Bianca wins. Bianca Belair. Minus one. They're both at the uh, minus 110 and minus 125. I think draw is the way to go on this one. Uh, I just I think Bianca's. I mean, she's, it's not time to beat her. Understood. Now. Um, My opinion. That's, that's the only one people want. Um, Absolutely. Tr- Trish and Lita got to go over. Or there, or there's turmoil between the, that team and the other guys. Go. I, I just, I see Trish and Lita and, and Becky going over. Damage control at a plus one hundred. Becky, Lita, and Trish at minus one fifty. God, that's like the, the, you know that top that top brackets. You know, there's you got two hall you got two hall of famers in there. That's. But I mean, if you want to fucking make, you know, you can definitely beat Becky. And fucking, you know, put put a rocket up this uh, up your heel faction's ass. Right, could happen. Yeah. Hey guys, need to call a quick time out here. Wanted to tell your listeners what I've been telling my listeners over at OU didn't know for a while now about all the cool things happening over at AdsFreeShows.com. The wrestling wars are heating up as David Crockett and Conrad revisit March of 1985 on the book. Vince has brought WrestleMania 1 to life, while Jim Crockett Promotions is preparing to be back on TBS television. And you got Dusty Rhodes and Tully Blanchard on top, Magnum TA and Ivan Koloff for the U.S. title, $5,200 at the gate. And meanwhile, while that show's happening, WrestleMania is becoming a thing, and uh, the wrestling wars are about to heat up, because just one week from now... You guys are back on TBS. Former WWE executive John Filippelli sits down with Conrad on an all-new edition of The Insiders and discusses his tumultuous relationship with Bruce Prichard during his time with the company. Vince was trying to, I think there were times where he tried to sort of get us to try and work together better than we were. And I, when I was quite candid. I was quite candid about how I felt about him, about that I didn't appreciate you know, him undermining us or me. And I uh, I would have no part of it. And I told Vince, if he doesn't straight his act out, I don't want, he, he's got to go. Either he goes or I go. Ad-Free Shows members recently got to chat live with the Enforcer, Arn Anderson, 
and hear stories of legends like the late, great Bobby the Brain Heenan. Sharpest, funniest, wittiest guy there's ever been on this earth. I could look at Bobby and go, hey, Bobby, you got a bump on your neck. Before I could get neck out of my mouth, he had to come back. Boom, boom, boom. And just hilarious. That's just a small taste of what we got waiting for you. With four levels to choose from, see for yourself why Ads Free Shows is the best value in wrestling today. Sign up now at adsfreeshows.com. Um, I, so you'll be watching WrestleMania. Uh, clearly you're not watching AEW anymore because I was looking at the news and I saw that <laughs> you have a blood oath with Steve Austin. And, but um, actually, t- actually mm-hmm. tonight I taped the show. I taped uh, Dynamite tonight because they fucking they got like a stack show. And to prove everybody wrong, I think there's a bit of. A oh, I just want, I, I, actually I'm I'm just watching Jade. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's there's the headline that was carried uh, carried a quote from the show. This will be this will be available for viewing on our uh, on the yeah uh, it says quote I just want to go on record today I have not watched AEW in months it goes back to Steve Austin uh, Steve Austin and I got a pact that he's not watching it therefore I'm not watching it and what I can tell by Twitter is Undertaker's now not watching it Kevin said comically on the air yeah and and, and the thing is it's just like. It's it's almost a re- like the reference of since like that made Taker not watch like he was watching it before that like I just can't see Mark fucking yeah watching a whole lot of wrestling. Well, if 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 that didn't make enough sense for you, um, the pro life crowd in South Carolina and Texas. Ooh. This is uh, this illustrating is their respect for life by wanting to execute women who get abortion. Yes, and you're talking about an ideology for pro-life. This is so take a fetus um, that couldn't li- live outside the mother and have the mother's you know, ch- choice that not to, not to have the pregnancy. Maybe she's raped, God forbid, because you know, you're just supposed to suck it up, I guess, rub some dirt on it if you get raped and you get impregnated. Uh, and it's not like fucking every girl that I've ever met in my life has been raped in her life. You know, it's like mm-hmm. it's, it's not a very common thing at all, Jesus. Um, so under those But then go ahead and, and, and just basically, it's a, I guess you get fucking a pair of kings, you just double down, right? It's just the... Split the kings. <laughs> Pro-life as a term was the irony here, of course, right? It was... No, it's... Pro-life, if you actually peel... It's like you just have to peel back the corner of pro-life, and it says you can read clear as day anti-woman. So... Well, anti-fetus after it's born too, because they they don't want they want no social programs, no preschool. Um, you know, it's just when it's in there that it's. Uh, well, that's the George Carlin bit that that's fucking amazing. Well, if, yeah, he's right. If he said that, it's if you ever, absolutely. If you, ever, if you ever get a chance to watch that <clears throat> Carlin bit on 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 pro life and that whole abortion thing, it's just it's it's beyond spot on and like fucking seventy nine. He was he was like a prophet. I mean, it was comedy, but it was so uh, socially entwined with, and it was so cerebral. Was yeah, you know, he was, it was great. Just, one of the greats. You didn't really listen to him as much as you absorbed him. You know, it's like fucking the old uh, absorbing junior that had the uh, fucking ball in the fucking gimmick, and you pull it out and. Rub it on your fucking yeah, injuries. Mom, could you put the Absorbing Junior on my neck? It's sore. I slept funny. While you're at it, can you get the mentholatum? Good old days. The good old days. I don't even know what you're talking about. It's clearly a generational gap. But I do know that if you pop 
a blue chew and it's absorbed into your system in Bang. no time. You are ready for action. Let's talk about absorbing a little goddamn blue chew is what I want to talk about. Stiff one of the week is brought Kai. to you by Blue Chew. It's the unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. Um, you could take them anytime, day or night. Plan ahead. Be ready when it's go time. They're very discreet. Those of you that are watching or seeing the packets, right? Slip one of those out, pop it, chew it, ready to rock. And Blue Chew will deliver these to you. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and bang, once you're approved, you receive the prescription within days. It's shipped. It's at your door. Best part, no doctor's office, no pharmacy. Uh, they're made in the USA, prepared, shipped directly to your door in discreet packaging as well. Nothing sexier than confidence, folks. So uh, chew it and do it, if you know what I'm saying. Time to have better sex. You don't have to have anything wrong with you. Just that boost of confidence that when it's time to go, you're going to be ready. And as always, special deal for the listeners. Try Blue Chew free. F-R-E-E, goddammit. When you use our promo code NASH at checkout, just pay $5 for shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code NASH to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank BlueChew for sponsoring the Stiff One of the Week. BlueChew, one of our oldest, most dedicated, and loyal advertisers, those folks at BlueChew. They've been with us for the they've long been, haul. Yeah, they've been since day one. And they uh, and they pay their damn agency is, is what they do. Um, so let's uh, the stiff one of the week. We're gonna you know we're gonna be talking a little college basketball over the next few weeks. It is March Madness. So the uh, Bobby Knight guy was like a prophet for Indiana for how many years? How many years was Bobby Knight? Whew. I don't know. I'll say. 27, 28, 29, 30, I don't know. As ubiquitous as the school itself when it came to uh, championships. This is a, uh, a covert recording done in the locker room at halftime. I wonder so how they you, got this because it wasn't like it was a cell phone around. No, I know. Which is uh, this? This courtesy of uh, our listener Miles Blankenship suggested this, and I said, you know what? Damn it, we're talking basketball. Let's do this. Here's Bobby Knight at uh, halftime. I, I'm I, guessing they were losing. I had the and I had the fucking privilege to have this fucking prick in my fucking in your house, right? In, in my ten by twelve living room with my mom sitting there. It was a pretty quick discussion, from what I remember. You said. Yeah. That fucking hair. That fucking hair's gotta go. Yeah, go suck a dick. All right, it's halftime. Let's go, Bobby. Want to play? Then I'm getting the fuck out of here. I mean, if you're not going to recover, Greg Graham, if you're just going to let him drive by you, if the rest of you are going to let him catch the ball outside the three-second lane and drive all the way in here without one guy challenging him, then I'm leaving, and you fucking guys will run till you can't even suffer. Now I'm tired of this shit. I'm sick and fucking tired of an 8 and 10 record. I'm fucking tired of losing to Purdue. I'm not here to fuck around this week. Now you may be, but I'm not. Now I'm gonna fucking guarantee you that if we don't play up there Monday night, you aren't gonna believe the next four fucking days. Now I am not here to get my ass beat on Monday. Now you better fucking understand that right now. This is absolute fucking bullshit. Now I'll fucking run your ass right into the ground. I mean, I'll fucking run you. You'll think last night was a fucking picnic. I had to sit around for a fucking year with an 8 and 10 record in this fucking lane. And I mean, you will not put me in that fucking position again. Or you will goddamn pay for it like you can't fucking believe. Now you better get your head out of your ass. So, uh, so I guess eight and ten, eight and ten was, wasn't a place that Bobby Knight wanted to be during the season. It sounds season. like it, right? The, that's back. <laughs> obviously, that must have been when it was actually the Big Ten with fucking uh, Indiana and nine other teams. You know, so it's, you would have eighteen league games. He's talking about having them run until they die. What what was the, what was the when you were in Tennessee? What was the go to punishment if coach wanted to go a little hard on you guys? Oh, they just run the fucking, they run the dog fucking. You know what, you know what kills me? 
because it doesn't. This kills me because it doesn't. Because when they run you and mm. they are running you and they say, "Well, I'm going to run you to death." No, you're not. I won't fucking die. My body will fucking will 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 give out, and I'll be laying on the. You motherfuckers will be put me in an ambulance before I die. Like, no, I'm not. You're not going to run me to death. So if you can't do that, how about this? Fuck you. I'm going to fucking jog. I'll. F- you know what? Don't play me. I don't give a fuck. Ah, oh, you were that guy, huh? Yeah, but you know what? Once one fucking once one of the other fucking guys looks over and goes, yeah, well, it, it's like the picket line. Fuck, we'll all strike. We'll all fucking say, fuck this dick. Would you run bleachers? or Would you have you go like line to line? Like We had it like like the old Stokely Athletic Center is where I played at Tennessee. But it had risers. So, and they were fucking big. Like it was like each step was a riser. So when you, if you had to run to the top and back, it was nothing, man. It was just... And you know, fuck, you're a, college, you're a Division One college basketball player, man. You're fucking, you got a six pack. You're drinking fucking one every every fucking night. I mean, you're fucking. I mean, I could, you could, fucking play play a game, go out, party all night, fuck some broad till five six in the morning, roll out, go get your ankles taped at eight thirty, empty stomach, fucking. Worst case scenario, throw up in a fucking wastebasket behind the fucking behind the hoop while you're running sprints. Shit's gonna be over by noon. You get fucking dressed. We play on Friday. Go to the fucking football game on Saturday. Get fucking hammered there. Was homework or studying in there anywhere uh, whatsoever? You had you had two, during the season. You had two hours. Uh, if, if practice, I think like practice would be. Three thirty, and we usually went like two, two and a half. So it'd be like six, and then I always, I, they, they wouldn't let, let let you lift uh, free weights back then. So I used to go to the Nautilus room, mm-hmm. and I would do, I do a, a Nautilus workout. I do. A Why Nautilus. the restriction on free weights? That you might drop one on your legs. No, because mm-hmm. because you would get too muscular and you'd lose your oh. your sh- shooting touch. And I think I shot like. Forty-eight percent from the free throw line. I was so going to say, what were I you was from really, the stripe? Bro? Yeah, I was really worried about losing my fucking touch. You and Chris Dudley. Yeah, fuck that. My my job was to fucking hold Kevin McHale's shorts to the, to the point where he wanted to swing a punch at me. Was there any way to defend those arms, man? When he started like snaking around you? Yeah, don't fucking don't lose your. You're not gonna. The guy's fucking standing reach was eleven feet. It's not like you. Why are you leaving your feet to block a shot? Nobody's ever. I've never seen anybody block Kevin McHale's shot. Maybe Jabbar. I don't know, but it's like fuck. It's like just stay put. Push mm-hmm. him six feet out from where he's comfortable. That's right. all you can do. You know. Take take a fifty three percent shooter by the end of the night. Have have him be a forty seven. You've done your job. Well, it is tournament time, as we've been hinting at. It is March Madness, and uh, you know, after a year of Florida man and Jersey guy segments, I thought that um, that this tournament uh, is what should happen here. Uh, over the next few weeks, we will get down to find out who is the national champion of debauchery. March, March sadness, maybe we should call it. What is the most pathetic uh, story we've read out of uh, out of Florida or New Jersey? So we have to, you know what? We have a special guest here to read the rules at least, so we can uh, we can get this all down and see how we're going to do this tour. Our good friend uh, Dick Vital is here with us, and hey, baby, it's time. For Jersey Guy and Florida Man. Here's how this is going to work, okay? We got two divisions. We have the Florida division, which is going to, it's loaded with eight competitors. And then we got the Jersey Guy, baby, loaded with eight competitors as well, okay? We're going to square off. Tonight we're going to do these first eight games, okay? So we're going to know who's advancing, baby, <coughs> in Florida. We're going to know who's advancing in Jersey, okay? And then in subsequent weeks, 
We're going to have everybody square off, and there's going to be one sad motherfucker that's going to be at the top of this bracket, baby. So let's get busy with this Prime Florida time, man versus baby. Jersey guy. Here we Primetime player. I get to say thank you. I did, I did get to interview Dick at one point in the 90s. He was a wonderful guy and an interesting career. Um, but, hey. I wanted to go. I wanted to go to Detroit. You told My me. Mom wouldn't let me. Yeah, she. Uh, yeah. She. 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 I, my girlfriend in high school. Was, her name was Bernie Jacobs. And my my mom said you're gonna you're gonna get her pregnant. She'll be out of school. You'll be out there. For, you'll be running the fucking streets of Detroit like a thug. And I said, please let me go to Detroit. I want to go to Detroit. Got any Mike Bunker? Like, and we used to have zero hour. It was an hour uh, class before school started. Only the basketball players could take it. It was basically basketball practice from mm. the first day of school on. <coughs> yeah. It was illegal as shit. Yeah, by the, t- by the time the, the Thanksgiving tournament came around, we were fucking razor sharp. We would fucking drill teams. So y- you have mom to thank for the trip to uh, to Tennessee, huh? Yeah. Tennessee. So, so let's get this break. So, here's how this is going to happen, guys. We've got. You know, they, they didn't like me down there. I, I think. I, I think, the term they used was evil. Kane. Um, so the bracket. Let's do the Florida um, bracket first. And what we're going to do is there's of course two of us hosting this show. And then we've got three behind the scenes. We've got Steve and um, Wesley and Dom. So we ha- we do have an odd number here. So we will have somebody advancing uh, for each uh, uh, game. So those of you listening at home, I will read the uh, the story I, it, to refresh anyone's memory uh, if you're playing along at home. So the first game is the number one and number eight uh, seeds squaring off, of course. And... Um, the uh, number one was the uh, the headline is face eating attack lasted eighteen agonizing minutes and this was out of Miami um, gr- a grisly assault on a homeless man whose face was eaten by a deranged assailant lasted for eighteen agonizing minutes uh, and was captured on near- nearby surveillance cameras uh, Rudy Eugene who authorities suspect may have been high on a dangerous new str- street drug known as bath salts okay so. He- could have been worse. It could have been your ass. Yeah, I mean, whew, and after eight, imagine eight eighteen your, minutes your being ass, down each, there, each, licking each the copper penny for eyes. eighteen minutes, and then um, <sighs> the number eight uh, that he is squaring off against is uh, man drinks bleach in courtroom after being found guilty of armed robbery, and uh, yeah, I'm not sure what that uh, what what his. Uh, uh, what his intention was it doesn't even matter it's it's it, it, this is this is a one seed versus an eight it's not even it's just there's no there's no reason to even go into the bleach drinking is a the face the face eaters fucking moving uh that right. would be my vote as well kevin um let's see what we have okay so it's yeah the three west uh steven so let's move him, uh him down onto the bracket there the number one seed the 18 minute face eating uh advances obviously I mean, for God's sakes. Um, uh, The second game of the night here. Uh, Sister, this is the number four versus the number five. Sister stabs um, her... Sister is stabbed? Let me get this. Woman stabs sister with EpiPen because she's, quote, allergic to drunks, police say. Uh, Squaring off again. Against uh, the number five, man arrested after buying meth and asking cops to test its authenticity. Okay, that's that's a, that's. See, it, it, it's like that eight nine, the eight nine in the fucking tournament the bracket way. that you got. The fuck yeah, but the, the the committee picks the eight. The fucking bookies always pick the nine. This is like the four or five. I'm picking the five, pick too, the and this five. is unanimous, I think, for everybody here. So, yes, our friend uh, who asked, uh, let's, let's give him some credit in case he's listening here, for God's sakes. This is um, this is Mr. Uh, Thomas Eugene Colucci, 
uh, of Spring Hill. Uh, nicely, play, nicely played. Uh, <laughs> like hitting, hitting your fucking uh, putter off the 17th <laughs> at uh, the, the players last weekend. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Yeah, I can't believe I ended up in the water. So, let's see. who's. Uh, let's scroll down on the bracket here. We need to get our next competitors. This is, and we're in the Florida division. If anyone's just joining us, we are in the Florida division here for our March Madness. It better not just be fucking joining What's that? us. It better not just be joining us. Like, we want Absolutely, but, you run. know, sometimes... Uh, Someone's finger might hit the uh, hit the slide button by accident, or maybe they slid down for exclusively to see the tournament. Uh, the number three seed uh, was the man dressed in bull costume attempts to burn down house with ragu sauce. So much going on there. Um, and then, uh, where do you find uh, a bull I, one? I remember all sense? these. I remember all these. I mean, this is fucking six by, I mean, the fucking kid got, got The number six, yeah, shot, man yeah. takes 10-year-old son on a paintball drive-by, and the child is injured by real return gunfire. Um, and then the other fucker is the guy that is in, isn't he in the, uh, the number two, isn't he in the, uh, Nativity scene. We will get to him. He is the next game, the next contest. But how about here? Who who's advancing? The man in the bull onesie trying to set fire to a house with ragu. No, yeah, I agree. Six. I think the man who takes his kid out for the uh, for the uh, paintball drive by, which I guess needs some explanation anyway, and then the uh, he's dealing with someone firing a real yeah, gun at the car with his child in it. You teach your kid to do heroin, like me. <laughs> Man arrested after having public sex with a dog and damaging a church nativity scene. Takes. Mm -hmm. This this is a. I remember the fucking the. the we gotta have the graphic on the robbing GameStop in plastic because that was that was the. the yes, the, he is really the another the number seven say. burglar wears clear pat plastic peg overhead as he robs GameStop. There he is, obstructed by nothing but the clear plastic bag over his face. Whew. I mean, fucking a fucking a dog in a nativity has a lot of just. Yeah, we got to give it the fucking. We got to give it doggy style on Christmas. See, my thinking is like, like number seven, the number seven seed, the robbing the game. He's just a monumental he's just stupid. asshole. Yeah, he's just stupid. He's like the guy with the meth. But this fucking, I mean, railing a dog Absolutely. in the nativity scene. That's there's a that's not fucking. That's not. No, by, you're you're by planning accident. that. I mean, I'm sure the dog wasn't in yeah. the nativity scene. That that he was plowing, he brought the dog there. I, I mean, it's no. Now he would have been fucking a camel in a nativity scene. That I would have like requested fucking, video that's, that's of the that. Indiana th that's that, that's the Indiana thirty-two and O run in seventy fucking. Uh, all right, so Florida is complete. The Florida bracket. I think we're we're all agreeing, right, that it is the uh, it is the uh, yes. nativity scene. First round is always kind of easy, right? You know, you, the, the uh, even in the uh, in the NCAA. So now over to the Jersey Division. We need to choose our four winners um, over there. Um, let me scroll. We're gonna do the well, Jersey just yeah, one first too? round uh, on each uh, in each division. Next week will be the second round. Jesus Christ. This is fucking. This is this, this is, is not well, funny. Well, we have to. The tournament has to happen. <laughs> it, it would take. It would say why? <laughs> why it's not funny? We got it. We got. We got to. We you gotta move this along. The toddler fight gonna, club. The daycare workers charged with running a toddler fight yeah. club. And the uh, the twenty. The, the, I can read. I can read it. I remember the bit. Fuck the guy tried to get a refund. Paid a hitman in Bitcoin. Get the fucking. And try to get a refund. That's not as good I as the Toddler Fight Club. The Toddler Fight Club has to move I, I, on. I, we, we can read these. We don't have to fucking go in and give them too much. This is first round. So they advance. The number see, four DUI's. seed now squaring off with the number five. DUI suspect tells police his dog was driving. Yeah, that's that, that beats, I mean, just 
with your ha- hazard lights on. That's, again, that's the guy with the fucking the. Well, bag this is right. The second story is uh, teens were caught dumping a murder victim in the woods after leaving the hazard lights on. Yeah, and I think that, and that's New Jersey, so that's like every fucking that's like Wednesday. <laughs> so the dog driving advances. Dog driving advances. And, uh, okay. See what I did here? I just I just fucking sped this fucking this process the, up to these. Early, early, early round. Uh, You're gonna see. Someone's gonna write in and say this is their favorite segment <laughs> of the week. Yeah. Uh, if if you fucking Can pay I, somebody, they will. But it, uh, at this well, point, I fucking uh, I feel people love someone running to get paid involved with this show. Fucking, um, number three: yeah, nice. two men who stole a rock band's equipment, posted it on eBay. And uh, the number six seed man brings thirty-two bags of weed into the courtroom. Just bringing thirty-two bags of weed, just having thirty-two bags of weed, puts you. Yeah, over. I mean, I'm I'm with you. Yeah, unanimous too with the crew. So yes, thirty-two bags of weed advances, and then the final game. Doctor comes on patient. That's gonna be hard <laughs> to fucking beat. The number two seed in Jersey was doctor who ejaculated on patient gets two years in prison, and uh, the number seven seed was a shoplifting duo attempted to steal three hundred seventy dollars worth of condoms and energy drinks. For a night of action, yeah. Any any doctor who's putting a load on nah, his patients, yeah. I think. Did you see that thing? It was on Netflix where that guy had he was a uh, worked at a fertility place. Yes, in, like, and he impregnated half the state. And he, he, he yeah, like every, when they did like the like people's like were doing those those uh, ancestry meet, like, and they were like people were coming up like fucking like two houses down and shit. <laughs> Like, yeah, I did oh, see that. Fuck. It was somewhat terrifying. All right, so we so we're set for next week. We have our uh, our game set for Florida. Two games in Florida, two in New Jersey, uh, for the two divisions, and we will see. Uh, we will see what happens. the uh, The bracket is filling. The bracket is filling. Something that gets me almost as excited as this. Well, that was. I just got to say that was fucking fun. It was amusing. What, 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 another fourteen minutes on WrestleMania, for God's sakes! Oh, oh no! I just, Jesus Christ! I, just, I must have. Uh, maybe that. Maybe that looked good on paper or something. I don't know. I just. Well, you let us know. the The, the audience is our is our boss, so we'll see how that goes up. Yeah, see, see what what Wesley Wesley puts on Wesley on the side fucking comment says nobody's just on, on his the, own show like Kevin. Show. <laughs> <laughs> fucking believable. God. Oh could no! Been, fuck. Could have been eaten, yeah, man. Um. Yeah, that fucking that ass for four to eighteen minutes. I got kind of a cool thing going. I got my I got the because the. Uh, Daylight savings. I started the show with the windows open. I put the hurricane shutter up, and now it's like I feel like I'm in like New York City. I can I can watch, like I'm looking across, and there's somebody like watching TV. Looking into the other windows and the development there. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and the building building six next to mine. Um, is anyone um, wagering in those buildings on the top eight uh, Florida man, uh, New Jersey guy stories? Uh, no, but there there is somebody fucking that wasn't earlier is now hanging from his fucking fifth story. People belt steering day. into traffic on the Monday morning commute. <laughs> well, Kevin eats a dick. I'm going to talk to you about Harry's razors. I Again? Love Harry's. Let me tell you. I, I'm going to go piss. You have a few minutes because I got to tell everybody how much I love Harry's for God's sakes. Um it's all about quality and for me price okay the razor and blade industry uh has gotten a little nuts i have to say as a consumer it gets a little crazy and uh and harry's by eliminating the middleman and streamlining their product distribution has brought us what we've always wanted the quality and the low prices um Harry's razors are incredibly sharp. They're made in their own factory in Germany. 
All right. So they cost as little as two bucks per blade. You're going to get a quality razor that you can depend on delivered straight to your door. Okay. And it is a smooth shave. I got a kit the other day. I and this is what I'm going to talk to you about now. They have the gel, the gel gimmick that when you rub it on your face, it turns into the a foamy shave cream. I think Kev just fell in the toilet, or that was him dro- dropping his log. Um, the uh, I got my set. I had that. I actually had some body wash as well uh, that I'm enjoying this week. You can get this quality set, the shave set, the body wash, soap. There's um, there's the actual uh, shave foam if you want to go straight to the foam. I enjoy the gel that when you rub it on your wet face, it turns to the uh the shave cream so you're gonna get your quality shave without the hassle and now you got a three dollar harry's trial set how the hell are we doing this is what you're saying right now the truman shave trial set it's a 15 dollars value it's yours for three bucks at harrys.com slash click you gotta put the slash click folks you're gonna get a five blade german engineered razor with the weighted handle foaming shave gel the travel cover okay you can buy replacement blades by delivery whenever you need them for as low as two dollars guys this is no joke all right you're going to go straight to harrys.com slash click that's k-l-i-q don't get overcharged for razors okay get harry's that's harrys.com slash click for your three dollar trial set thank you harry's it's a great product i use it um and uh, used it uh, just this morning. I just have I just have to say that took a while till she glanced in the mirror. She looked at the license for my name. A smile seemed to come to her slowly. It was a sad smile. Just, just ensuring if anyone stayed for that whole game. She said, gone. "How are you, Harry?" I said, how are you, Sue, through the too many miles and the too little, my, the too little smile, I still remember you. She said she was going to be an actress, and I was going to learn to fly. She took off to find the footlights, I took off to find the sky, and there she's acting happy inside her handsome home, and here I'm getting high in my taxi, taking tips and getting stoned. And that's all from Harry Chapin thinking about Harry's. Harry Chapin, bit of a genius, right? But listen, um, uh, there's there's something to isolate for the uh, Instagram stories uh, for for next week. By the way, uh, Dom, I'm sure you're on the case already. Uh, it it was a bit of a week, Kev. It was a bit of a week. I actually was really surprised when I saw in the news. That it had been a year since Scott passed. I, I was talking to you. Yeah. We were actually we were making plans to to launch this show last time uh, last year at this time, and I didn't know uh, Scott was in a bad way. I don't think I don't think a lot of people did. Um, he was hospitalized, and uh, I was talking to you about like kind of getting your band back together for the first episode. And you were like, dude. And you told me the whole Scott thing. And it was just, it was a short time after that. And um, so a lot of things were on my mind. When I saw that, it was the, the, the how time had flown and just revisiting the unfortunate uh, year that last year was. And we certainly don't have to go through all that. But I did have some Scott stuff uh, I wanted to talk about, if that's okay, to honor your partner. And um, Sure. What you know, I talked to I talked mm-hmm. I talked to Cody. Yes, I I, I talked. You know, you know, it was it, because this is airing much later. This is the day after um, Scott passed, and um, so I talked to Cody, and it was it was we both said the same thing, and just like everybody's like, "Wow, it's been a year," and we're like, "Yeah, it feels like three weeks." Like you know, like it, it's so strange when. You know, the person's so much a part of your life. You know, it's just... But there's not a day that I don't think about Scott. 
you know, it's just not. And, it, 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 and if I wanted to, I couldn't because something's going to come up on social media that's going to link a picture of he and I or, you know, e even uh, something in, in my photos that'll come up that was a past photo of, of him and I mm -hmm. doing something. So, you know, it's just, I spent, like I said, I spent 30 fucking years yeah. of my life with that guy. He, um, how old was he when he passed? He was um, 63. Okay, so you guys were the same age, basically, right? Because he, he would have been, um, he would have been 60, or maybe he was, was Let me see, uh, born in 58, 1958. He's 50, so. he 58. Yeah, he's a year, yeah, we, we, it's like, I would catch him and then he would pass me in October. So, you know, a, a young a younger man, and uh, when he when he yeah, but fuck my my kid was oh no of course no no I I got no I comparison there. Time. I mean, if my kid if my kid would have been made it to fucking sixty four years old, fuck you'd have been one hundred twenty seven, Kevin. You would have been. Um, I had a. I wanted to, uh, so. what, what I meant by a younger man was, did, did you think that the end was imminent? When he went into the hospital, did you, did you feel it was this No, because he'd been there, he had, no, it, it, he had been, he, you know, he'd been through that fucking, he'd been through so many trials and tribulations. Right, that was another element of it, that he was like, like you know, Jason Voorhees, you can't was, take you Scott know, Hall <laughs> out. I mean, it was just, yeah. Scott was a tough motherfucker. Scott was also a very, I mean, highly, highly religious. Was he really? So, yes, yes. He said grace before every meal. I don't know why I'm so surprised by that, but I am. Yeah, to, no, he was, he was, he was brought up right. Catholic. I mean, I, I know that he, they, they had communion. I mean, it, we, his... His mother's very religious. Pat's, uh, Pat, his mother, Pat, uh, mm -hmm. stays in contact with me. And then, of course, Cassidy put uh, put four roses on Scott's uh I saw headstone that today. That, that was incredible. For the, yeah, for the remaining clicksters. And it just, I mean, it's just, it could, it, it could be three. You know, with Hunter as, as close mm. as he got, and you know, it's just it fucking. We're getting old, man. Get your colon you know? checked out for fuck's sake, will you? All right, I'm going. Like, I mean, fuck it's, it's, you know, I'm not gonna. Like I said, I'm not gonna shit in a box and fucking, you know. Hey, Beyonce, like for, for your first fucking Whoops. time you roll fucking <laughs> on Yahtzee. I'm gonna take my chance. No, motherfucker, you don't take your chance on the first roll. Take your fucking twos. Like a, a, a camera that can see through your body. By the time I hit fifty, and I, get, I always hear about, I'm like, yeah, they're, they're gonna, something's going to advance. Uh, I'm not going to have to you do know what, that. You know what? Huh. And they've already fucking. You say when you hit fifty, it's now bumped 45 up to forty-five. There's a history, I thought, or maybe I just made that up so I didn't have to go for the last five years. Or if you're fucking, if your uh, doctor wants to fucking just fucking get you a, a little better acquainted with you. Um. But back to Scott, um, he, uh, what was his best quality in it? Because he was the guy that had it all, right? I mean, I think universally agreed. Great, great worker in the ring, entertaining on the mic, um, smart like hell, could, you know, could put the match together, could put a finish together, knew it was good for his angles. If you were working with Scott, if you were, if you were married to Scott, you knew you were going to have, you're going to have a good run. Um, what of those things was his superpower? Was it the psychology? I think his passion. Right. You know, I think he was, he was so, um, you know, I read a, uh, a tweet that somebody retweeted and it was from Dwayne from The Rock. And uh, they showed a clip of, and this is when, uh, I think Dwayne posted this when, when Scott first passed. 
and it was a match that they had when we came back and just you know just he just you know he told Scott how he had emulated and watched tapes and you know loved his crispness and how everything he did just you know there was no wasted mm. motion and um, I saw a couple things like um, our Dom wrote a, uh, a beautiful piece um, about Scott uh, that, that he, she shared with me last night. And I read it, you know, and it was just like he was saying, like, you know, if you were honored enough to be paintbrushed by hmm. Scott Hall, you know, because nobody else fucking did. Like, nobody, you know, there was only one Scott Hall, you know. He had that James Dean cool to him. It wasn't mm. forced. He was just he was just that motherfucker. I always thought he was more Sean Connery myself. He had that kind of said if he wasn't British. He was Something I learned about Scott from from you guys um, working with uh, with Sean Waltman on something I'm doing now and just talking to you that people outside wrestling probably don't know. He cared so much about not just like getting himself over, but like he cared about wrestlers, like always. He, he, they, they, I remember when we had a nitro and like they just basically told Scott to go out and beat Jericho, and Scott fucking said, you know, all right, and then Scott went out. That's to what I Chris mean. Over. Like. You know, and it was just like, and and I and I know Chris. You know, I, mean, I know Chris remembers that because, but the it see a lot of people aren't, a lot of people are so caught up in doing, the process, where the process was it was was second nature to Scott. So while everybody else is out there thinking what the first spot is, Scott's watching. Jericho leaned into the crowd and the crowd just reach over and grab him like he's the lead singer from NXS Hutchinson, you know? And Scott Scott sees that and he's like, nah, man. Like, I'll give them what they find. I'll give the fucking people what they want. Fuck, if, if the other people, if, if the people in creative can't see it, maybe they just need to look through my lens and he would fucking, you know, he would do that. He would He would let people see it through the eyes of Scott, and uh, you know, most of the people that works with Scott, like you know, like you, you, you've got your sushi story and you know, a little light, but when it came down to it, I mean, it was just he had he he had a heart of gold. I never saw that. I never saw that dude ever go by a homeless dude or somebody in need and not give him money. Never. Just not did did not happen, and Sean Sean Waltman and I were having this conversation yesterday, and you know we were talking, and you you know you you brought to my attention were that uh, behind the what's it called, the series, Dark Side of the, the Ring. The series, yeah, it's the Dark Side of the Ring. So they want to do something, and um, they want to involve me, and. They, they want to involve Sean Waltman. Cody's, Cody's going to be involved. And um, you and I had this conversation yesterday. Um, you know, the thing that we want to do is, you know, we just, we just did the misconceptions of Kevin Nash as, as an episode. But just tell people who Scott really fucking was. And I just don't think that the A&E perspective is ever going to cover the post-traumatic stress of Scott and, and, and the shooting that happened at the mm -hmm. dollhouse on Orange Avenue. It just will never, and f there's a reason why so many of our fucking, our warriors come back from, 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 from combat and they take their lives because they've taken a life. And Scott's thing was always, because he was so highly religious, that Scott, would say, but you don't understand, man. I'm not going to go to heaven. Like I've, I, I, I've, I've, I've broken one of the Ten mm. Commandments. Thou mm. shall not kill. Like I've killed. 
I'm not going to go to heaven. I'm going to my my soul will be in limbo. And I'm like, no, man, that's it's it's not, it's not how it works. It's you can ask for forgiveness of your sins. If you're going to play the game, you, I mean, you can't read half the box. You know, you can't read half the box top. You know, you got to read the whole fucking thing. But you know, that was one thing that that Scott would always say is when he was in the ring, he would say like. Like he couldn't wait to, like, to he'd love to work and you know there were there were days that i would leave my fucking i'd leave my energy I, I mean i love to work out so i'd fucking I'd, I'd train fucking back or legs or something like that and fuck i'd i wouldn't have much left for the fucking for the ring that night and scott would be like that's mm-hmm. fucking bullshit man but scott would always say that in that ring I'm in charge of fucking everything. He says, outside the ring, he says, I'm not in charge of anything. That's when that's when I lose the reins of my life when I go wow. outside those ropes. In these in these ropes, I'm fucking I'm a maestro. Right. And he knew it. He loved the business. One of my favorite <laughs> stories Waltman just told me was um Sean was talking about like you guys would get in the car sometimes. And Scott would be like, like, all right, guys, no fucking wrestling talk. Let's put the fucking radio on and just fucking have a beer and just fucking hang out enough. And Sean said, within two minutes, Scott was bringing up the business kit. Nobody else did, yeah. but Scott hey. in two minutes. Bro, you know yeah. some shit tonight yeah. that went on that I didn't tell you guys about? Yeah, or fucking I was watching your match, man, and I... That fucking opening, sp- you know, why Why would you, I'm just curious, like right off the bat, he's kicking you in the face, it doesn't make much sense. Scott, we're not talking, yeah, but I can. Oh, okay, okay, Oracle. That's the stuff that, you know, when you hear Scott Hall's name, because we're in a headline-driven world right now, we have... People fit into very easy categories. Oh, this guy's the hero. This guy's the fuck up. This guy's the drunk. This guy's the whatever. So the first things you hear uh, associated with Scott, when it not from workers. If I, you know, you talk to wrestlers and they're going to tell you their personal stories with Scott, but media um, coverage of wrestling by non wrestlers is the demons, right? Of course, like that's the first thing out right. there. The demons. And then you got to dig a couple of levels to get to, you know, one of the best workers of, of that period. You have to dig through all that stuff first. Wouldn't it be nice if it was the other way around, that you got to one of the best workers in the 90s and had to dig a little deeper to find out he was an alcoholic? Yeah, well, you know, it, it's funny because, you know, one thing that Scott was really adamant about was just, you know, like up until the end was he just would not watch AEW. Just fucking refused. And I'd be like, dude, it's it's really not that bad. He's like, I'm just like I, I, I can't fucking I can't Well, watch. that's only because he had a pact with The Undertaker. Or else he he probably would have. Ah! Uh, so then I'll have to, I'll have to fucking, I'll have to. The pressure's t- on. <laughs> huge pop. Scott contacted you yeah, and told you to watch every, it, this week. I th- I'm waiting for the Godfather, like Ron Simmons. I'm waiting for these guys to just try. Because like I know the fucking Godfather ain't watching AEW wrestling. I don't know, man. I, just I think know. Charles has another I, run I in him, actually. I, I don't see fucking Papa doing it, man. Not if Taker's not. Him and Taker were fucking up. That's, 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 that's the soul maker. I wasn't soul around taker. Scott to have enough good stories um i did the one show with him he um well actually i did an impromptu show when he showed up during the iron Sheik roast i wasn't fond of scott that night but uh subsequently when we did a planned show it was fine but my my one other but scott wasn't wrong on that night wasn't well we don't have to debate that now wasn't wrong to show up on a platform take before the owen joke he was he was destroying the the vibe of the show so the owen joke is one all right but but i'm just yeah i'm just saying though that that 
Scott had a, Scott was very protective of the business. I, I, I think that he, with with him being fucked up, and if somebody, especially if he looked up there and saw that it, it was wasn't wasn't people, it was a comic. It was a comic that, that were, said it. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah, but not I, a worker. So it's anyway. like you don't have like. Let me tell you my. Well, I don't want. I don't want to. Don't want to badmouth Scotty. It was a bad night for Scott, but before the Owen thing. Well, but yeah, but you're going to talk about Owen, where he fucking was over in Germany. I mean, you don't you don't know. So just I want to make sure that you understand that Scott and Owen spent a lot of time together, living in Germany. And wrestling for auto, and their their wives lived in fucking these little trailers with them, and they went caravanning from town to town. And no, that Owen I and understand. Were like that I understand. It was just fucking. It, it was the it was yeah. the so it was just, the shenanigans prior to that joke that that that, that frustrated me. I wasn't me there. I don't know. As a I know. producer of a large event. Anyway, my favorite Scott. Oh, so you see, so you had fucking. You didn't tell me you had fucking had money. Yeah, it was our show. It was our show. <laughs> Oh, fuck, I didn't know that. A very funny thing, though, uh, to, to to further cement. <laughs> not that, what not that money matters. To further I mean. cement what I've said about to be a good producer, you generally have to be a bad human being. As Scott has this guy pinned against the wall and security is up there pulling everyone away, I can be seen on the camera running up to the stage with a release in my hand so that Scott can sign it before he gets arrested. Um just how the mind works so but no my favorite scott moment was i had to i had a drive to south jersey somewhere some shore town to rescue you from some uh some godforsaken event they were keeping you too long there for and scott was also there and he was i think he was signing beside you you guys were set up next to each other yeah. And you had called me and you were a little upset with the accommodation so i ran down i was concerned getting you out we wouldn't. I wouldn't have been able to make no, it know. to your because we. Yeah, no. I, I, it was like it was. It was also the fact that right. you were no, going to get fucked. The, no, they were fucking me, and then they were going to fuck you. So I would. I, but I came in and I went I to you. The, I, I went I took to the you heat for it. first, obviously, because I had to say, Kev, I got it taken care of. Oh, but I guess I walked by Scott, and he goes, "Whoa." He, you just you go to him. You don't say hi or anything to me. Like you don't have to talk to me, but like, not a hi, uh, a Kev, Kev. I got you a car. <laughs> I was like, dude, I'm sorry, Scott. It was great. He was, uh, he was a, uh, he was a figure that is always going to be mentioned in not just because he was in the clique. I mean, you guys have cemented your position as a group together in the business but scott would have stood alone um with or without the click and i think he's one of those guys you would have been yeah, talking he's, about he's, forever I mean, whether he was dean dean martin would have done that's fine without a great the rap great pack. unfortunately he gets the dean example with the glass uh but we'll call him we'll call him sammy sammy would have been fine without uh, without the rest of the boys do you do anything, um, not to be too personal, but, like, do, do you believe in, like, do you do you pray? Do you talk to Scott? Is there? I talk to him. I just talk to him, you know. I talk to my son. Mm -hmm. I talk to Scott. Is it therapeutic for you, or do you think that there's even maybe that one in a thousand chance that? No, I just think that I'm I'm so interesting that I'm making their day. Well, clearly, Kevin feels that <laughs> about everyone. But is there a one in a thousand shot that Scott can hear you? I think it's more than that. Le the odds are lower than that. Okay. Yeah, I think he. I I think that. Yeah. So so let me tell you this one. So I don't know if anybody saw, but I posted on Instagram a picture of me in high school shooting a jump shot. Yes, I did see that, actually. Okay. So um, it was March Madness was coming around, and somebody had went online and opened. That's, that's a picture out of my mm. senior year yearbook. And somebody had taken that, and it was they took, like, the 
varsity basketball. It's too bad there's one of me, Duncan, that was kind of sweet. But um, they, took this, they, they took that one and they sent it. And it said that somebody was trying to, you know, when I, the email, and when I opened the email, that picture was there. So I fucking opened it up, swiped it, sc you know, screenshot it, put it in the gallery, trimmed it, and put it, and said, fuck it, I'll put it on Instagram. So, and it's, a lot of people are saying, like, that's a really funky looking shot. It's fucking because I'm a six foot eleven fucking two hundred and eleven pound kid. It looks a lot like Reggie Miller's fucking jump shot yeah, to me. Yeah, he had that long extension with the pop at the yeah. end. Yeah, well, you're a lefty. Look at I, this, I mean, those fuck my. Yeah, my hand. Look at this. I mean, fuck, man. Look at my hands. You wonder why I couldn't shoot? I got shack hands. Fucking and no manscape was going. No, you're full. You're full bush Look under the, the arms. Yeah. So, so I can't get that motherfucking thing to download. And then finally, you know, I, Tamara and I go out and there's a, a little uh, local restaurant that has uh, fresh fish every day, a local catch. So we went there. It's called Millie's. My buddy Chris owns it. If you're ever down in Daytona Is Beach Shores, Is that the one that's like a Millie's. one long room? No. No, this is, this is, no, this okay. is a I was small... In Okay. It's a small. It's got a little outdoor. Is that the one by the bridge? It's, okay. No. It's gonna keep guessing. This is on uh, on a, it's on a one a. Um, so we come back, and my wife walks upstairs and she called me, and I'm still sleeping in T's room. And I haven't, I haven't, I don't, I wouldn't even know how to turn his TV on, because it's all run through his PlayStation and all this other shit. So, she goes, Kevin, come up here. So I'm like, all right. And I walk into the room, and there's that picture that you just shoot, showed on T's Get TV screen. How did you not tell me this? In the, in the middle, because I, I. I you know, I, we didn't have the conversation of fucking crossing over or anything, you know? So we, we are having that conversation. So now this is, is brought to mind. Because shit happens all the time in our house. So it's like, it's the, but this was one of those things where I was just like, what the fuck? So I go over, I can't get the fucking thing off. I can't get it to go away. I don't know where it's at, but I do realize now that it's there, it's on my fucking phone that it's downloaded on Instagram. So when, when I tried to fucking download it downstairs, he fucking hijacked it and put it up on his TV just to fuck with me. So I know it's up there, so I go back downstairs, and I was catching up on that show, uh, uh, The Last of Us. And... Um, T and I played that video game. So I go back upstairs, and in my mind, I'm going to be erasing that basketball picture of me from high school, and there is a HBO Max with the where all the different television the shows thumbnails, yeah. are. Yeah, and it's it like rotates like this, and it's on what I was just watching, The Last of Us. And it's, it's now changed from that to this. And I fucking, it took me four or five minutes just to turn the TV off. I don't know how it's, I'm just like, dude, like touche, like, like fr from, from, the, from the heavens. This motherfucker is so much more IT, <laughs> he's, more, he's more tech savvy than, than I'll ever be. So yeah, I mean it was, it, it, and it's like Tamara and I weren't freaked out. It was just like we were having a, a bad couple of days together. And it was just almost like thanks, T. Like thanks, man. Like uh, that 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 was, you know, if if, if nothing happens again, you know. Well, you like welcome the the visitation for for lack of a better term. Oh, I remember you telling the story yeah. here where when you Anything. had a dream. 
that was so vivid you woke yeah. up and you were like thank you for uh for checking in yeah i had it i had it any time i have one i had one when he was a child this past week and we were in it was we were in the hot tub in our house in, in scottsdale and but he it was like he was three but he had his vocabulary mm. when he passed it was like he was a 26 year old three-year-old and it was fuck i woke up man i was just i mean like i am right now i was, I was just fucking like wow like that's you know and I, I, I don't have you know my dreams are so mundane like i don't have anything chill I, that ever fucking happens and it's just like you know like I, i'm one of those guys like I can probably count on my on my. I, I never have sex dreams, you know. It's like I remember one time uh, there was a conversation with a bunch of, a bunch of young guys. I don't know, maybe we were in sixth grade, and they were talking about mm -hmm. having wet dreams. And I'm like, I've never had one. And they were like, You never had a wet dream? And I remember my my brother fucking wake up like fucking. <laughs> Like a porn star, you know, like fucking, like fucking somebody had one of those gangbang movies, and he'd fucking be dripping wet up there. <laughs> That's because you were you were cleaning out the gun. I, I, exactly, as I said, fuck you, you, you. If you go to the if you start going to the range when you're in fourth fourth grade, chance of fucking a stray round going off at night or no it's pretty fucking fire rare. Is going off now. No, I was just like, what? What? What happens? But I remember one time, man, I was I was in uh, I was having a dream, and this lady was fucking like she had like she she was like endowed breast wise, she had dark hair, attractive, and she was um, measuring me for for a, a pair of slacks, no. and no, yeah, no, it was fucking Rachel Ward. It was like it, it almost. Remember when fucking I Dream a Genie when she had the twin God, that had dark that. hair? That was a source of, of a lot of boner action for you. I don't remember that episode, oh, but, but I, I was believe that, you. I, no, it, she it was she had a she had a a, 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 a like a you know an evil twin. I think uh, I think Elizabeth Montgomery had one also. Had like the dark haired fucking Samantha. There you go. There she is. So she's measuring you for slacks. That's where the other hand is, so she's, clearly. She's, and all of, a, all of a sudden, she fucking slips up and fucking, next thing I know, she's pressing against my fucking hog. And I, I felt one coming. You know, I guess I'm like, oh, shit. And fucking, I woke up, and they're just like, my shit was boned out, and I just fucking smack, gave it a smack. Like, no. Nah. Oh, so smacked it down to... Down Smack boy, that bitch yeah. down, man. Down. We don't we don't do that shit. So, thank you for fucking fi that. That was a great fucking pickup on uh, on Barbara Eden. Oh, from that episode. Yeah, those of you uh, listening, of course, yeah. we have the. Uh, She's so fucking. Yeah, we got the visual. Gosh, she was fucking hot. That was pretty, and you know what? For the year, what, what are we talking? Late sixties, right? Yeah, they couldn't show her. Oh, name. that's what. Okay, right. So the they had like those uh, hip hugger type uh, came high on the. Uh, yeah. I guess it would be the opposite of a hip hugger, a hip swallower. But um, I, I told you, I, 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 I've talked about. I met her when we were playing at, at the Greensboro Coliseum. I think we were playing Furman. In the first round of the tournament in, uh, who was that, 79? It was the first win that Tennessee ever had in the uh, NCAA tournament. And we beat Furman. And she, I, I ran into her in the uh, elevator. Oh. I was 18 or 19. I was young. I remember she, man, she was, you know, Harper Valley PTA, that kind of age. Like you talking about a fucking milf, like fuck. As Scott would say, snort, slurp. Scott would always say that. I'm gonna say fucking. 
He'd say, fucking man, I, what I'd love to do is, because it'd be some girl, he'd be like, like if I can get her on all fours and just fucking snort her ass while I fucking just slurped her box. <laughs> That concludes our touching <laughs> tribute to the passing of Scott Hall, the one-year anniversary. Hey, man, we're talking about Absolutely. my boy, man. To the, to, and if, if anytime somebody bent over, like especially like an overweight woman or something like that, he'd, he'd always go, <laughs> So as time went on, we spent so much time together. I'd be in the car, and some lady be fucking, you know, doing uh, gardening in her front yard. I'd be in the car with my wife and my son. i go, <laughs> <laughs> My wife would be, what? Like, really? Like, Tamar, like, we're yeah, all still 15. You don't get it yet. It's, yeah, it's, it's, for, it's, it's for Scott. Scott. <laughs> yes, he was alive. Uh, I mean, it was just like fucking it just, you know. Like anytime we ever saw a hot girl, we we didn't have to look at each other and say anything. We didn't have to say, "God, she's hot." We just say, "Snort." Right. If you said "snort," then you knew. Fucking snort, slur. So stealing that. That's like all the right. Scottisms. Fucking like if you if you fucking start to get bo, you're you're fucking beefing. Because you fucking you got you smell like a beef hot dog that's been fucking cooking in, in in the fucking water. It's the the hot dog water. So fuck, dude, man. If you be overseas, I mean, you get get on the elevator in Germany and those motherfuckers, man. They, they just gotta be like, oh fuck, these dudes are beefing, beefing man. Meat gazing. But we we have to have a running a running calculation of things yeah. that. World, world according to fucking uh, world according to Scott. Scotty. All right, everyone. Everyone knows that science proves that cold sleep creates better sleep. Temperature controlled sleep repairs muscle, improves cognitive function, and uh, you can always start your day feeling sharp, confident, and energized. And that's where Sleep Me comes in. Sleep Me. The new home for something you might have <coughs> remembered as Chili Sleep. They're bringing you the same great sleep that Chili Sleep did, only now under a different name. Sleep Me. They make the coldest sleep systems available. They create the environment that meets the body's natural need for lower core temperature, promoting <coughs> deeper restorative sleep. These sleep systems are water-based, temperature-controlled mattress pads that fit over your existing mattress and provide you the ideal sleep environment. It's so easy. There's an app. As you open the app, set the temperature, go higher or lower throughout the night, depending on how you feel. Um, Sleep Me just launched the Doc Pro Sleep System with new Hyberall. Experience ultimate cooling power with the Doc Pro Sleep System. Pair it with the new Sleep Me app, get real time temperature adjustments. Okay? It is impossible for me to fall asleep when I'm hot. If I'm sweating, if I'm warm, even if the bed gets too warm, it's friggin' impossible. This thing's a goddamn dream come true. I love it. I use it. I have it. Head over to sleep.me slash Kevin to learn more and save 25% off the purchase of any new Doc Pro, Uller, nice. or Cube sleep system. I have the Uller. It is phenomenal. Uh, this offer is available exclusively for Click This, the Kevin Nash podcast listeners, and only for a limited time, by the way. That's sleep.me, S-L-E-E-P dot M-E slash Kevin. Take advantage of our exclusive discounts and wake up refreshed every day. Thank you, Sleep Me. Um, I had mine set on cool, like, I have said it. it was cool. It was maybe like 66, 68. And the uh, outside temperature dropped that night. It was, it was supposed to only be like 57 and it dropped to 41. And the air conditioning was on. I woke up, man. I, I, I was just like, I, th- I thought I fucking fell asleep on a lake. You know, it was so cold, but I was able to. Like, if I would have not had that on and not been able to, right. to, to heat that, because I just, I, I, just, I just, I got up, used the restroom, did everything, and I just sat there. There was a, there was a chair in there. I just sat in there and went over my phone for like three or four minutes. 
I put my hand in there and just like yeah, you went up it. with it. You know, the temperature went up. Yeah, that's tremendous. Yeah, I, went, I took the, I took the temp up. I didn't have to go get up and turn fucking the the heater on. And my wife was like, she fucking froze. But you she keep doesn't it on have your a side. sleep system. Yeah. But, yeah. No. Oh, I that's right. It. You're in, we don't you're in, in the same room. bed. That's right. That's right. Because yeah, I'm in T's room because I fucking. She she can't sleep with next to the fucking leaf blower. Next to oh 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 yes yeah. Ah! You ah! Check out that, uh, that apnea uh, that you might be having there. I don't have that. That might be why you're snoring. No apnea fucking apnea is when you stop right, breathing. Right, I was snoring a lot, and it was because of of my uh, cessation of breathing. It's dangerous, you know. You should get it evaluated. After you get your asshole taken care of. Yeah, fucking add, add it to the list. I'm not going to fucking, I'm not going to sleep with a mask on, so there's no reason if to get about it. The doctor it. tells Everybody you to, do, you should. They, they're very easy, Kevin. Mine is just, it's just the nose. It's like when you go to the hospital. Yeah. It's yeah. I've already, I've, I've, I've already fucking. Okay. No. Nah. I'll get the fucking gimmick in my chest. That I press a button, that uh, new yeah. fucking deal, whatever right. that is. I'll get, I'll, I'll get that. I'm, I'm, my body's so used to getting cut on, it'll just fucking go. Okay. Just open one of the existing stitch marks and just go in. Yeah. There. Ask Nash hashtag Jesus. Ask Nash. You want to get access to Kevin Nash? This is how you do it. Hashtag Ask Nash. He will address you every week, like Braxton Rasmussen, who says, "Hey, Kev, what story with Scott do you have about Wichita?" I'm from there, and it'd be interesting to hear. No, that somebody threw a beer off off of Scott's head, a full beer, and Scott went over the rail, and he turned around, and I was going, coming over with him, and we got you know far, far far enough into the crowd where it was just like, like you know, if this shit goes, it's gonna go, and we're gonna mm. be highly outnumbered. Uh, we just also decided that maybe that. Smacking a couple of fans wasn't the best idea with the chance of us being uh, put in jail and losing our jobs and money. and so. We now, how did he know you had a Wichita? Is, is that a famous story, or do you just happen to have one? I think I brought it up last week. I, said, I, I just think I brought up Wichita, but I didn't say what the story David Van Boglen, uh, Kevin, aside from Click members... Who is the best wheel man, and who are your top five guys to have in the vehicle for a road trip outside the click? Jarrett's good wheel man. Um, Mick's a good wheel man. Steve Borden, Steiners, Lex. Lex is a great with that Lex is great with Are these that. guys also good to have in the car for conversation and Okay. Absolutely. You, know, you, you the only way you'd know they're a great wheel man is because you'd have to Rude was horrible. Why? Rude was a horrible wheel man cuz he'd fucking take his gimmicks and he'd <laughs> say I'll, I'll drive it until my gimmicks kick in, kick in. And I was going to say like 8 minutes later you got to pull over. Yeah. <laughs> Be three fucking. I'd have a joint. He'd have a joint. There'd be a joint lit in the fruit, the fucking ashtray. We pass. I'd pass him a lit joint. He'd pass me the other one. We <laughs> fucking just hot boxing. Just ah! Gregor Tennant. I'm traveling to New York City on the 20th of March for my 40th. Uh, that's when the show is premiering. As a matter of fact, so you're here now, Gregor, or in the air. Uh, I want to know what the best places to eat are. Any tips would be greatly appreciated from sit-down meals to food on the go as we do the tourist thing. Love the show. Banter and dark humor. Okay. Kev, some New York eateries. I, of course, can offer some as well. Yes. New York? Why the fuck would I know what's, what's happening in New York? You worked in New York? And ostensibly ate... Yeah, but it doesn't mean that it's. So oh well, maybe it, maybe it not. Exists. Right. All right. You know, so, like, uh, so Carmine, you can take this go over. To Car- I mean, 
Okay, I mean, if I'm going to pick a steakhouse, you can't go wrong with Smith Smith and Walensky. Walensky. Um, Keen's Steakhouse. If you want to try a mutton chop the size of your head, go there. We, uh, what was the one that uh, Peter Luger? Peter, yeah, that was that Scott, like Peter Out in, Luger, uh, Brooklyn. Yeah. Um, Carmine's um, Bond Forty Five. I'm a big fan of. Uh, yeah, that 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 place down there. Where? Down uh, here. Yeah. Hey! Evolving into <laughs> high school. Let's, let's do. Let's do another bracket to get things back on track. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you find yourself down in Little Italy, you want to have some fun down there. Uh, fucking uh, Idaho, man. Joey. <laughs> Idaho, Idaho versus fucking Idaho versus fucking Eastern Oregon, man. Let's talk about the coach for eleven minutes. <laughs> if you find yourself Fuck downtown yeah. in Little Italy, Joey Paisano's was always my place. Uh, Is that the one that's down? You got to go mm-hmm. down the stairs to go to it. No. And then hit Ferraras for dessert if you do. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's. Oh, it could Greenwich. be Grinchville's. Maybe Grinchville's does have Greenwich. a lot of those uh, ones downstairs. Yeah. It was, it was like, oh, there you go. There's a bunch. Carmines, Keens, Bond Forty Five, uh, and definitely Ferraras. Cannolis at Ferraras. Is it, is it, Car- is, is it Carnegie yeah, Deli? Carnegie closed Carnegie and now? the Stage Deli. Those uh, old uh, comedian haunts. Yeah. Classics, fucking man. gone. Yeah. See, that's what I mean. I, 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 I just haven't been there in so long. Like, I think the last time I spent any time in New York was me and Scott did the uh, Big Apple New York City Comic Con. We stayed at the Marriott Marquis downtown. We took the, uh, what were those A little subway? gimmicks? To the, uh, the cab? No, the the little the little oh the like the rickshaw cabs. thing where they yeah <laughs> Fa- yeah the fa- it's like call call it fancy cab or whatever they call it but we had some motherfucker pedal us every day there and back through traffic it was, and we 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 were like okay let's go out someplace tonight and then we get fucking we go out in this this little rooftop thing that was closed but this guy would let us out there and Scott and I would, would go out there and get high and then we just say fuck it man let's just eat downstairs at the restaurant. Every night we ate at the restaurant. They had a great wine list. Marriott Marquis what? has that great lobby because the lobby's on like the tenth floor or whatever. Yeah, they had a great lobby bar, Sky Bar. I forget what it was called, but I was just there yeah. not too long ago. And then, um, then on the top, on the roof, uh, uh, not the roof, the, the top floor, they have the rotating. Yeah, well, the, 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 well, they also had that balcony that that overlooks absolutely Times time yep. Square. Yeah, that outdoor balcony. Yeah. No, I, the, to me, that's the, the rooms are decent size. Like, you really can't go wrong if you're staying in New York City to stay there because, I mean, this, like the forty second, all this, like, there's, there's some easy subway pickups that are, that are within easy walking distance that are, I mean, that are easy mm-hmm. subway pickups. You know, where it's like you fucking you take the the one gimmick. Uh, it goes right out to Staten Island, to the Staten Island Ferry. Um, yeah, you're centrally you know, just, located too. So whatever you're doing in New York, yeah, you're, you're in Times Square. Yeah, you can you can, you can go and see all the 9/11, uh, you know, memor- mm-hmm. you know, memorials and all those. You know. uh, Vip and T, F Mary Kill for Kev and Sean. All right, get ready. Raquel Welch, Sarah Silverman, B Arthur. Raquel is which? The F, the marry, or the kill? <laughs> All. F for marry or then kill her? I think Sil- Silverman gotcha. would be a good wife. I think she'd be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I think yeah, Sarah Silverman's cool. I think uh, um, I'd probably bang Raquel, marry Sarah Silverman, and kill I just swapped that last one. I'd probably I, uh, probably bang B and maybe get rid of Raquel, just to be noteworthy. Jordan, hey Kev, must say I'm loving the podcast. Makes the 50 minute commutes to work on Tuesdays bearable. My question is: Have you sampled any wines from New Zealand? If yes, any favorites? Yes, I have. Um, 
God. I had a Syrah, a Syrah from there not too long ago. I can't remember the... I can't remember the vineyard. It's like you, you know, when you when you go overseas and you and you drink. It's like I went to uh, mm-hmm. Cape Town, and I went to this restaurant, and I had read on and wine enthusiasts. I think it was Kevin Arnold was the name of this Shiraz, and uh, I, I I could be wrong, but for, re- for some reason that stuck in my head, and like I. They had uh, me and Scotty Steiner went, went, went out to dinner, and they had like the three birds: at emu, ostrich, and whatever the other fucking bird is. That was like the the, the plate, and um, all red meat. And uh, they had that they had a bottle of that Kevin Arnold Shiraz. It was God. It was like it was maybe a year old, but it drank like it was five, six years old. It was a great bottle of wine. Okay. But, yeah, they've. You know, and the crazy thing too is that, that Australia and New Zealand were so far ahead of uh, going with the screw tops. Yes, the, actually, the first time I think I might have seen it was on a Malbec. No, what was it? Probably, pr- probably. Yeah, probably that's what Australia. I was going to say. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was in Australia. Pro- yeah, probably a Shiraz. Yeah. I feel like that was the first yeah. one I was exposed to. They got popular well, for yeah. what makes a wine like trendy like that like a yeah, Shiraz like it was everywhere for like a minute I, I just I just think that I, I think that the, the grape um, you know like it, for for so long like everything was just French you know it was like if it wasn't from the Bordeaux region it wasn't a red wine and then you know that that movie came out with it sideways said that the you know the, the yeah, no, the other one that that where it was earlier that, that basically said the California Reds were equal to the oh. to the French, and then um, yeah, sideways made Pinot. Made everybody right. drink Pinot, and I I, t- I I I just was never really a, a, a huge Pinot fan. I, 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 you know, yeah, I guess. I mean, a, a Shiraz is like fuck. A, Usually around you know fourteen seven and up alcohol content. I like something that's got mm-hmm. a little alcohol forward, you know. If I'm gonna drink, if I'm gonna, you know, there's some some thirteen five uh, rosés that are nice to drink in the, in the summertime. But I don't. I just I'm not much of a, a mm-hmm. light. You you know. you. All yeah. right, just for review, let's go over the uh, brackets and the results uh, from this week's Jersey Guy versus. Florida. Click this is a production of Butch and Sundance Media. I'd like to remind everyone, producer association with Podcast E, created by Tristan Nash, Kevin Nash, Sean Oliver, producer is Steve Kaufman, graphics by Dominic D'Angelo, title sequence and audio edit by Wesley Burleson, theme song by Dale Oliver, technical research by Tristan Nash, copyright 2023, Butch and Sundance Media. Kev, do you want to do another bracket next week? Fuck no. But he'll be here for the show. But I... Uh, uh, but- but but I will take off my headphones and fucking li- and watch the brackets for the optics. <laughs> I watched the credits and then I left. Uh, and uh, by the way, it, two nights from today, if you're listening on Monday, Wednesday night, the 22nd, if you are an ad-free show subscriber, please join us for a live taping. It's always fun to see how this shit goes down. How do I know? Try to keep you entertained. Watch me fight, fight, fight the crew on fucking shortening, mm. fucking bracket. Kidding, I, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs>